Afternoon in Bowling Green, Kentucky for a big Conference USA battle between the visiting Charlotte 49ers and the host Western Kentucky Hilltoppers, both at 2 and 1 in the conference and in a four-way tie atop the CUSA's East Division. Alongside Bob Belvin, Nate Gatter with you this afternoon on ESPN+. Plus. And Bob, we are expecting a, a big game between these two teams, probably a high-scoring one. Whether Charlotte will be able to cape up is the question but no doubt that Western Kentucky's offense is explosive, especially through the air, and that is thanks to uh, the one and only, perhaps the Heisman hopeful now, Bailey Zappi. Yeah, I had the pleasure of doing their first game. There was this coming out party, and since then, he's been nothing but steady and putting up huge numbers for this Western Kentucky squad, as well as the transfers that came with him from Houston Baptist. Now, we're gonna see a lot of points scored this afternoon by the red and white, pretty confident of that. The question is coming into this one, can Charlotte hold their defense against this high explosive scoring Western Kentucky team? And things are gonna be even more difficult for Charlotte because Chris Reynolds, honorable mention all COSA last year and Charlotte's all time leading passer is not available today, at least unless there is an emergency. He sustained a hand injury against FAU last Thursday night of the first half. And so instead, we will see the first collegiate start for the transfer, James Foster from Texas A&M. And the big loss last Thursday night still lingers, although Will Healy, the head coach, said, I'd like to forget about that. The injury and the Foster in the lineup is going to be a big variable in this football game. And Tyson Helt is kind of licking his chops defensively. He has a defense that's not been all that successful this season in keeping your opponents to lower numbers. He sees this as a great opportunity here with the reserve Foster in the game. Yeah, a couple of exciting young coaches in Conference USA as well. Tyson Helton, 44 years old. Will Healy, of course, just 36. And in his third year already at Charlotte, a couple of uh, coaches who have done big things at their respective programs and uh, certainly one that especially going forward. I think uh, fans have high expectations of and probably a lot of uh, bigger schools have their eyes on as well. Yes and yes to that that comment, Nate. Particularly for Tyson Helton, who's kind of come here and, and really struggled that first year or so. And then when he got the transfers with Zappi in and he made some wholesale changes to his offense, that's been the big difference there. For Will Healy, it's just building a program that's only 10 years in existence at this level. I think he's done an outstanding job. I'm very familiar with him. And the blueprint that he's had for success has been right on spot as far as his Charlotte football team goes. Coin toss happening now, and Chris Reynolds is not wearing his pads. He warmed up with a helmet, but no pads on Reynolds out there, so it looks like, indeed, it will be emergency only. Zappy for Western Kentucky against the young Foster for Charlotte. Kickoff coming up after this. There's a four-way tie for first place in Conference USA's East Division. That'll be down to three at most at day's end. Western Kentucky and Charlotte ready to go from Bowling Green. Corey Munson has it teed up for the Hilltoppers. Charlotte will receive. Shadrick Bird is deep. It is over his head and nearly all the way out of the end zone. It is, in fact, beyond the end zone. A little bit of wind helping out Munson. And uh, now right away, Bob, we're going to get to see the young Redshirt sophomore James Foster, who's been in college for a few years, but still very inexperienced. He'll be making his first ever start today. Well, he's had to have known as the week has progressed that Reynolds would be iffy. And then, of course, we found out immediately getting the stadium this afternoon that was indeed the case. So hopefully that's taken a little bit of the edge off him for this offense, but it's an offense that really got their doors blown off last Thursday night. And they've got to kind of recover with that with their number two guy. First quarters have been a little kinder to Charlotte. They've played well in the first quarter, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Western Kentucky has had some slow starts, including last week against FIU. So maybe the 49ers can take advantage. Right away under pressure, and the first throw from Foster is low and incomplete. He was looking for his tight end, Ryan Carrier. This is a Western Kentucky defensive line that had seven sacks a week ago. And immediately, D'Angelo Malone is in the backfield with a hand on Foster as he delivers the football. And you know, that's one of those classics, I'm going to be here all afternoon kind of situations. And D'Angelo Malone, when we talked to Tyson Hilton earlier in the season, he was just so excited to hear that he did not declare for the NFL draft and move forward. And he's been real excited to have him on campus for his senior season. And he has been showing out. 
Bird gets the handoff, has a little crease to the far side and out of bounds, eventually corralled by A.J. Brathwaite Jr. after a gain of four. It sets up a more manageable third down, but a passing down nonetheless for Foster. Yeah, this Charlotte team, 161 yards a game rushing, and it's no big secret. You want to be able to try and establish some of this rush game with your number two quarterback in. You can see Bird fighting for everything he can get along the sideline, and Brathwaite has really been coming on defensively for this Western Kentucky team. He has been really a surprise to them of sorts, and he's really been solidifying that back end. Camp is the running back on third down. Watson goes to Victor Tucker, and it's batted away incomplete. Beanie Bishop broke it up. Tucker is uh, the favorite target for any Charlotte quarterback, but Beanie Bishop had the man-to-man -man coverage, and Charlotte will have to punt. Yeah, Tucker averaging 83 yards a game receiving for this Charlotte team, and Beanie just with inside leverage right then, and really uh, the ball fake did not hold the secondary in, and that's a – batted ball that's very positive if you're Western Kentucky. They got the three and out that they wanted. Jareth Stearns deep for Western Kentucky. Bailey Rice, the 24-year-old true freshman from Melbourne, Australia, punts for Charlotte. It is not a good punt, a low wobbler. And Stearns is going to field it off a of bounce with a lot of room and returns into Charlotte territory. So as though things couldn't be even more difficult today for the 49ers, Bailey Zappi, as it stands, is going to get to start in Charlotte territory, but there is a flag that came down at the end of the play, and you wonder if this could be some kind of personal foul at the end of the play against Western Kentucky that would uh, cost the Hilltoppers the 15 yards or so that Stearns picked up on the return. No foul in the end. The officials pick up the flag after consultation, so it will be Western Kentucky's football first and 10 right around the Charlotte 48-yard line. They'll put it down to the 47, and uh, Bailey Zappi must be looking at his chops. Yeah, and eight's going to remain in the game. You can bet on that, too, because that's his favorite target, Stearns. What a good decision by Stearns to kind of see where that coverage was coming on the punt and just pick it up and angle out of sidelines, didn't take a hit, and got it in positive territory from Western Kentucky. In the end, that punt netted only 17 yards for Charlotte. And so the Hilltoppers start in 49ers territory, and they are lined up right away, waiting for the officials to let them go. Zappi, the nation's leading passer, 430 yards per game. Hands off to Cofield on first down. Look at all the room for Cofield across the 40, and he has a first down on Western Kentucky's first snap. Say what you will about Charlotte's running game on offense, but they have struggled to defend it on the defensive side. They've also struggled with tempo, and Western Kentucky wants to go fast right away. Zappi already has the snap, looks right. Deep ball for Davis. He makes the diving would-be catch at the 10, but it knocks out of his hands incomplete. Well, let's go back to the first play from scrimmage. Cofield's kind of been emerging in this run game for Western Kentucky. Had a good outing last week, and little bit of a surprise to go to him right out of the gate. And here's the pass to Davis just beyond his fingertips. And dare I say, Nate, that's probably a play they'll come back with as the afternoon progresses. Davis to transfer from Oregon. Rare misfire for Zappi, who had Davis behind the defense. It's Davis in motion. Pitch pass to him on second and 10. Gets a block from Cofield inside the 30. And down to the 29-yard line. That sets up third down and two for the Hilltoppers. Might add a great block blocked in by Beljan on the outside, the tight end just kind of sealing the edge. You hear so many commentators talk about sealing the edge. And in that case, not able to do it if you're Charlotte defensively. And this is a dangerous, in my opinion, third and short is a really dangerous opportunity if you're Charlotte on the defensive side. Talk about weapons. Zappi with four wide. Quick throw to Malachi Corley, who has the first down and out of bounds right around the 25-yard line. Call it a pickup of four, and Western Kentucky moves the chain. And Corley's the second leading receiver on this team and has been very solid coming in. And down a distance in that instance really didn't matter. They're going to stick with their game plan. They're going to throw that quick out and let their wide receivers kind of do things in the open field, and that's exactly what they got converting there. First down from the 25. The pitch pass this time goes to Corley behind Cofield again, but he's run down in the backfield by Marcus Robitaille, redshirt sophomore transfer from Butler, who's going to get a lot more playing time at safety with John Alexander, one of the key pieces on this Charlotte defense, unavailable today. And yeah, we haven't talked 
focused on the quarterback situation for Charlotte, but they do have some injuries in their secondary, which to your point is going to create that substitution need right there. That's a very solid play for Charlotte to get negative yardage against Western Kentucky on first down. Jerry Stearns is in motion, the nation's leading receiver. Second and 11, Zappi to throw. Outside a completion to Mitchell Tinsley, makes a man miss, and he's out of bounds at the 11-yard line. Western got behind the chains, but it didn't matter. Oh, again, sticking with the game plan, look at the tempo. This is something that uh, even color analysts like me don't get to talk a lot during these broadcasts when you talk about situations like that. But uh, I'm going to get to the end right now. You can see where they have to step in, make sure the substitutions happen, and then they allow Zappi and this offense to go back to work. Five wide on first and 10 from the 11. Zappi under pressure right away to the corner for Davis. He's got it. Flag is down to the backfield. It's a touchdown for Western Kentucky. Zappi's 30th touchdown of the year to lead the nation. Charlotte that time tried to bring pressure off the edge with Luke Martin. And Martin, I believe, is going to get called for roughing the passer. Roughing the passer, number 17, defense. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced. It is a roughing the passer call against Charlotte. That will be enforced on the ensuing kickoff. So Western Kentucky takes the early lead just more than three minutes off the clock. And Braden Narvison, who has hit all 31 extra points this year, is on for number 32 of the season. Can we talk about the pass? Just threw it to the pylon in the back corner. Clearly a timing route for Davis. Narvison tacks on the extra point. That's exactly what you said, Bob. They might be coming back to that route a second time. This time, Zappi didn't underthrow it. Look at the pass. Right to the pylon in the back corner. Fantastic. Zappi to Daywood Davis from 11 yards out. And Western Kentucky with a short field capitalizes. And the Hilltoppers are out to a 7-0 lead early in the first quarter. Back to Bowling Green after this. Corey Munson kicks off for Western Kentucky. It's a low squibber that bounces all the way down toward the end zone and does get in for a touchback. The Hilltoppers were thinking, kicking off from the 50, they'd try a, a half squib, half onside kick. Not a bad idea, but in the end, it still made its way over the goal line. Yeah, no doubt you were talking to the Brent Munson would kick it through the luxury suites down there in the end zone. And that's a great point. Make, uh, make Charlotte try and field that football to Charlotte's favor. It went into the end zone. and. Again, round two, possession two for Foster, the Charlotte offense that has been struggling. Bird will start in the backfield with Foster. Two wide receivers and two tight ends. It's Victor Tucker in motion. Just five yards for the 49ers on their opening possession. Bird gets the carry to start possession number two, and he has more than five this time, close to a first down. Finally, spun down after a pickup of nine by Khalif Falassi. No doubt that's what you need. Again, you foster a little bit of confidence there. You can get the run game going against a team that's been pretty, pretty stingy against the run. It's kind of playing to your favor positively as you try and erase this seven-point deficit. Western Kentucky allowed only 29 rushing yards last Saturday against FIU on 28 attempts, just a yard per carry. Now, a big part of that was the Hilltoppers' seven sacks because in college football, those count as negative rushing yards. Four wide receivers for Foster on second and one. Play clock at one, and he just gets the snap off. Play action, pressure right away. Downfield for DuBose, who goes down to make the catch. That's the second leading receiver this year for Charlotte, just one yard behind Tucker, so he just took over the team lead. And they're roommates, Foster and DuBose, so maybe that connection will come out today. See more of that, and like that conversion there for Charlotte, and Western Kentucky was not fooled. You can see the pressure they're gonna get. We're gonna come to it late here, and are they gonna review this catch? There will be a review right away. Our replay official is Jim Campbell. And he will get a chance to look at this uh, would-be catch that, as it stands, is the 35th of the year for Grant DuBose, who has been a big piece transfer from Division II Miles College, has uh, played a...
maybe a complimentary role at this point, an, an equal role almost with Victor, Victor Tucker, the second leading receiver in program history. Talked to the replay officials before the game and said, uh, what's the over under or how many you're gonna look at this afternoon? And he said, oh, we don't even think about that. We look at all of it. And it is rather early to get a review of this nature, less than five minutes into the game. Looks pretty clean to me. Yeah, not sure certainly that you can see anything conclusive. They'd be looking probably to see if the ball got past his hands and sort of bounced into his chest there, but I don't know that you saw anything there to indicate it. After review, the ruling on the field of a completed catch has been confirmed. First down. So they confirm that Scott Harden, the referee, delivering the decision from Jim Campbell. It is a first down for Charlotte. The 49ers at their own 47-yard line. That was their opening first down of the afternoon. Bird remains in the backfield with Foster. Tucker in motion. Foster on a design quarterback draw to the outside into Western Kentucky territory and inside the 40, chased out by Brathway to the 38-yard line with a Charlotte first down, and he gets a big congratulations from his head coach, Will Healy. Watch Foster go to the outside, and Brathway is going to be right at the line of scrimmage with him and just can't catch up with him. A little surprised by that. I think Brathway was a little surprised by Foster's speed, and of course, Will Healy's going to come over there and talk to him as well. You can bet on that. You'll see Will up and down the sidelines this afternoon. Uh, he tracks most everything that goes on in the field. It wasn't just Brathway chasing Foster. Healy was running along the sideline the whole way. First and 10 from the 38. Foster keeps on the read option behind his tight end carrier, and he's stacked up better by Western Kentucky, held to a gain of three. Good play on the line of scrimmage by Dom Bradshaw. And in that case, I think Foster just, because he's running to the short side of the field, just take what you can get. A little more dancing around than a little indecisiveness versus their previous play when he converted the first down. Victor Tucker not in the game at the moment for Charlotte. DeBose down to the near sideline with Mack in the slot and Keith Pearson Jr. on the far side alone. Play action. Foster has some time. Malone closes. The throw is complete to Pearson for a first down. Bradshaw was closing in, but the ball got there just in time. A long throw and well thrown by Foster. Bradshaw kind of mystified as to how he was not able to intercept this one. We'll take a look right at the markers. And he's right there closing on it. That is a great catch. And another conversion on a key third down for Charlotte. Just the second catch of the season for Keith Pearson Jr., the grad transfer from Presbyterian. Carrier in motion, first and 10 from the 25. Foster on the RPO toward DeBose, but it's knocked away. Good coverage man to man by Halasi. Yeah, that time Halasi a little bit late, but able to reach over and deflect it. And the, the play action, as you mentioned, they just did not hold the linebackers and allow that secondary to come up and kind of jump that route. So changes for Charlotte now with second down and 10 coming up and Calvin Camp, the secondary running back number five in white makes his first appearance of this drive. And we'd expect to see a lot of both of them and probably some of Shavon McEachern as well, the third running back. The 49ers probably going to try to control the ball on the ground, control the clock, which they've done well this year. But Foster has been more than willing to throw early to the outside, complete with a first down to Carrier, who spins to the 13, and Charlotte is moving the ball not only convincingly, but maybe even more importantly, Bob, through the air. Yeah, it's surprising. Carrier's going to cut the route off a little bit early and come back and help his quarterback out, and that's the difference. You can see created quite a bit of separation for himself along that sideline. That's an outstanding play. They go into the end zone then, trying to catch Western Kentucky napping quickly. Bradshaw had the coverage of DuBose, and it's incomplete to set up second and 10. Interesting, though, there doesn't seem to be a lot of limitations of the 49ers offense. We wouldn't have expected something like that, for instance, that they run up to the line and go quickly. If anything, we were expected to see the play clock down in single digits. Yeah, I think down in distance and where they are in the field, and you know, you've got to take a shot if you're that point and be able to kind of a shock play or a quick play. 
against this Western Kentucky, particularly this front four. And we talked about James and Malone on the corners, and they're kind of denying the edge. So that running game, that RPO is crucial. Camp has stood up right at the line of scrimmage and driven back by Darius Ship, the junior from Olive Branch, Mississippi, second year Hilltopper out of Northeast Mississippi Community College. And it's third down and long now for the 49ers after no game. I'm going to play the numbers 41% on the season. You can see that surge from that front four. And then the linebacker coming in and cleaning it up. Ship had a big game last week. Had a big game at Michigan State back earlier in the season. Charlotte hasn't been great in red zone offense, but Western Kentucky has really struggled at this end of the field defensively. The Hilltoppers have allowed 28 of 30 opponent possessions in the red zone to end in points, 13th worst in FBS. And Watson, or rather a Foster, needs a timeout. With a play clock running down, a big play coming up for Charlotte. It feels like the 49ers are probably going to need just about all of these kind of plays. They'll take a timeout, and we will follow suit. Third and ten coming up after the break. On Charlotte's first possession, the 49ers went five yards and punted. Western Kentucky went 48 yards in the blink of an eye to take the lead. And, Bob, maybe we were thinking at that point this could be a long day for Charlotte. But the Niners have moved the ball 62 yards on seven plays on this possession. Now they have a massive third down and ten. Yeah, they steadied the game a little bit in their favor right here. But as we talked about during the break, these are two really big play calls here as you go inside the 15. Carrier in motion for Foster, who has camp with him in the gun. And Western Kentucky just moved where the Hilltoppers drawn offside. Indeed, they were. This is going to go against Charlotte. That's a bad penalty for a number of reasons. Down in distance where you are on the field, what you're trying to Illegal accomplish, snap. and the fact number that it happened coming Offense. out of the timeout. Five-yard penalty, third down. That's a terrible penalty if you're Charlotte. And you can see the center just flinch. That's Hunter Kelly, the grad transfer from Langhorne, Pennsylvania. And it sets up third and 15. Wonder if the Niners might go more conservative now and just protect the field goal. Although that has not been a certainty the last couple of weeks for Charlotte either. It's a design quarterback run for Foster. He's hit in the backfield and swallowed up. Malone and Hunter met at the quarterback. And now, not even a chip shot field goal for Charlotte. Yeah, Hunter makes the play here for Western defensively. And you can just see, as you mentioned, meet at the quarterback. But Hunter has been emerging as well. Had 11 solo tackles in the bowl game last year. Has had double digit tackles six times. The last one coming at West Point on September 11th. And as you mentioned, this situation right now for Charlotte is by no means a certainty. Big kick for Jonathan Cruz, who's made just four of seven this year. On the way and right down the middle. He missed a short field goal last Thursday night against FAU along with an extra point but showed no ill effects of it. 37-yarder is good. Uh, the 49ers are on the board. Still 6.39 to go in the opening quarter. Western Kentucky leads 7-3. Bailey Zappi in the high-flying Hilltoppers offense back on the field when we return. Western Kentucky leads 7-3 midway through the first quarter in Bowling Green. The Hilltoppers off to a flying start offensively. Charlotte able to answer with a red zone drive that stalled out for a field goal. And uh, now a big possession coming up for the 49ers defense. Yeah, they got to make something happen here and limit the opportunities. And there's so many weapons that you have to counter with if you're trying to defend this Western Kentucky offense. And we're going to have plenty of time to develop that. but. They're impressive in terms of the personnel that they put out there and the combinations of that. And as I mentioned earlier, a little bit of an emerging running game for Western Kentucky as if they needed another arrow in their quiver. Now that's something with Cofield has been running the football exceptionally well the last three or four games. Number two offense in college football for Western Kentucky. Only Ohio State has averaged more yards per game this year. And on top of that, facing a Charlotte defense that allows nearly 450 yards per game among the 20 worst in FBS. Zappi starts in the shotgun with Noah Whittington, freshman running back to his left. It's Whittington in motion. 
Zappi goes over the middle. There's a first catch for Jareth Stearns, who makes one miss and is planted at the 34 after a pickup of nine. In the last four games, Stearns has 60 combined catches. Do the math on that. Nearly 13 a game. Look at that snap. Gets away from Zappi, and he just has to fall on it. Big break for Charlotte all the way back to the 17-yard line. It's a loss of 17, and the Hilltoppers go from second and one to third down and 18. Now let's see if Western Kentucky brings motion as they did moments ago. And that kind of freezes the linebacker to determine whether they need to go and follow that motion man or whether they need to just hold in their zone. So we'll see what Charlotte comes with here. Charlotte jumped, free play for Zappi, goes for Stearns, it's low and incomplete. But this is gonna be a five yard penalty against Charlotte and Western Kentucky will get another chance with third down and 12. Zero defense, excuse me, defense. It's a five yard penalty, third down. Is it too early to game to harp on penalties? But that's a big penalty right there because your secondary doesn't know that that flag is thrown. They're playing football, Nate, right? So you force an incomplete, essentially a three and out, give them another chance here on third down if you're Charlotte. Third down and 13 for the tops. And Charlotte jumped again, no flag this time. Zappi has all day, throws over the middle, high for Corley, it's intercepted. Marcus Robitaille had the big tackle for loss on the first possession, and the backup safety in for John Alexander has his first interception as a 49er to give Charlotte the football back. Trying to watch Zappi come off the field and talk to his offensive coordinator, but he's directing traffic. He's expecting that route to be a little bit deeper. With Corley. And it was five yards overthrown. You won't see that much this afternoon. Only the fifth interception Zappi has thrown this year. And Charlotte has the football back at its own 48, down by four. Foster off play action. Wants a deep ball for DeBose. One on one with Halasi. It's caught but out of bounds. And DeBose lost it when he hit the ground anyway. Incomplete. Well, everything worked well defensively then for Western Kentucky. And then you add the fact that Foster really didn't throw a good ball along the sideline. But DeBose, pretty acrobatic, albeit out of bounds, and couldn't haul it in just to get a hand on it. The second and 10 coming up for Charlotte, but uh, the, after the first drive was just a little bit conservative, doesn't seem like Will Healy has kept the training wheels on Foster since. Bird in motion. Hand off to Camp, has some blocking across midfield, and he stood up by Jaden Hunter at the 48 gain of four and it sets up a third down and six. These are the kind of situations where the 49ers have been good so far early this afternoon. Yeah, they need to convert here on third down. I thought Camp kind of abandoned his run block a little bit earlier. Uh, that was forcing it to the outside. Get a really good look here with Camp. You'll see he's behind that run block to the outside. You can see there's a lot of green grass there. He decided to cut it up. Might have been a bad decision. Big third down here as you mentioned. Third down and six coming up for the 49ers. Foster hands to Bird, has a hole for a moment up the middle, but Jaden Hunter delivers the blow at the 44 yard line to stop Bird short of first down yardage. Fisticuffs after the play, but no flags out yet. And it sets up a fourth down and two, where based on that third down play call, I would expect the 49ers are going for it. You gotta be real careful here because Sappy can turn this game around with one throw of the football. I'm not so sure with the struggles that Western has had that you don't punt and try and pin them deep here. I think this is a dangerous spot of the field given where you are in the game and still some inconsistency in the offense that you go for it. But this is Will Healy. This is the kind of approach that he takes to the game. Let's see what we got. 
Charlotte has converted 10 of 15 fourth downs this year, and there is another one. Foster has enough, but he's still pushing. Inside the 40, down to the 38. How about that for the young backup quarterback to get his offense fired up? And you had to feel that that's exactly the type of play call they would uh, go to if you're Charlotte. There's some safety in that, and I think really in this case, obviously you wanted to go between the tackles, between the guards, in fact, and uh, you're able to keep that very quick secondary kind of out of the play, get what you need, plus one or two, and now Charlotte's in business. That's why Will Healy coaches and I'm up here. It's a pretty good play call there to get it done. First and 10 of the 38. Bird with Foster in the gun. Foster off play action. Pressured by Malone, and his throw is low and incomplete for Bird. But one of the things you hear a lot about Chris Reynolds, the former walk-on, now Charlotte's all-time leading passer, out today with a hand injury he sustained last Thursday night against FAU, is how tough he is, how gritty he is. He played through that hand injury last week. He played through a labrum injury last year. And coaches for both teams were praising him for his grit. Seems like Foster brings a little grit as well. Well, and, and it was needed in terms of having the confidence in him to go for it on fourth down just moments ago. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what you got to have in a quarterback of this type of offense because you've got to be multiple. And Reynolds a walk on. That was an impressive uh, statistic when we got into our prep for the game. Around the outside, McEachern with his first touch of the game on the jet sweep, and he has good yardage on first down to the Western Kentucky 37-yard line, a gain of six. Now, last two possessions on first down, Western has come with just a three-man front. We talked about their very agile linebackers and back end very quick. And now, again, they're going to stick with that three-man look. Foster on third down, it's batted down over the middle. Will Ignat, the transfer from Tennessee, got a piece of it, headed for Victor Tucker, and now another decision for Will Healy, and he's gonna go for it again. Well, why not? Watch Ignat just get right in the passing lane. That's good work by a linebacker. You generally see the linebackers try and get the INT in that situation. They just got the big paw up and knocked it down. So fourth down and four for Charlotte at the 32. Tucker and DeBose together to the top of the screen. Spencer and Carrier to the bottom. McEachern next to Foster in the gun. Five-man rush. Foster doesn't see it. Hit as he throws, and it is intercepted by Demetrius Kane. Sixth-year senior who spent his entire career in Bowling Green, and he has his first pick of the season. That was very close to being out of bounds. We'll see. Foster again hanging in with pretty good pressure. Oh, did he get both feet in? Western wants to run the play, right? Before the replay, folks, take a look at it. Take nothing away. That was an outstanding play by Demetrius Cain. And we'll play on. Now look for the quick change right here. Look for the deep ball, perhaps, on that change of possession. Zappy to throw. Pumps. Wants the long ball for Corley. Into double coverage. Did he catch it? Yes, he did. Malachi Corley inside the 25. First down, Western Kentucky. You know, how do you draw plays up defensively if you've got a quarterback that has the confidence to throw into double coverage? This is going to come right into your living room. Already they've snapped the ball again. It's Corley again, and he is man of the line of scrimmage on the quick screen by Marcus Robitaille, who's having a whale of a first quarter getting the spot start for Charlotte. But uh, you were exactly right. Western Kentucky wanted to go deep right away. We'll review this. Before the snap. We'll have a sideline warning for Charlotte. The uh, whistle came in apparently. The notification from I, our replay official Jim Campbell that he wanted to take a look and this will be our second review of the first quarter. Yeah, <laughs> to our point, we may have jinxed Jim when he came and visited with us earlier. I think this one bears a second look. Then again, I was wrong with the interception on the sideline just moments ago too. From up here, I thought there was a little bobble as he came down to the ground. 
Does he maintain control all the way through the ground as he's making the catch? Hard to tell, but uh, I think if they had made the call incomplete on the field, certainly it would have been tough. Let's see if we can see the ball moving around down there. Well, the fact is, this is one time this afternoon where you're going to have the best view. Best camera angle, undoubtedly, this, the play's coming right at you. Has possession, has possession. Does the ground allow it to bounce back up into his shoulder pads? And then as he rolls, clearly has possession. I don't know that you could ever definitively see the ball loose, but based on how he's holding it coming to the ground, I have a hard time thinking the ball didn't jostle around at all. Let's hear the decision from Scott Harden. And the ruling does stand in contrast to the first review on which the call was confirmed. But Western Kentucky has gotten the benefit of both. And the Hilltoppers have first down and 10 to the 28. In the end, it benefits them twofold because they also get to nix that first down play that went for no gain. Ice water in the veins. Unpredictable. All the adjectives fit Bailey Zappi. But when you got an arm like he has, and the receiving core, the talent around him. It's real easy to go ahead and go with that change of pace and throw that deep ball right out of the turnover. Charlotte brings a blitz, deep ball for Corley in the end zone, incomplete, and a flag comes in. One-on-one -on -one coverage, he was matched up with Solomon Rogers in the end zone, and the junior from Wake Forest, North Carolina, never turned around for the football. Western Kentucky gets the call, it would appear. Again, the coverage has been rather good, but again, not turning around is the cause Action for defense. this Number 20, defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic. And it is down. a 15-yarder against the 49ers that moves the ball down to the 13. Actually, that was not a well-thrown ball in comparison to the touchdown pass right at that spot of the end zone where he just threw it right at the pylon. and. Big penalty against Charlotte defensively. They were bringing pressure, trying to force something out of Zappi. A rare run for Western Kentucky in this first quarter, and Whittington has stood up at the line of scrimmage for no gain. Second down. Good on you, Harry. Whittington and Cofield, you know, I've been bragging on Cofield here in the first quarter, but Whittington's a uh, freshman that's really coming on as well in this run game. And again, uh, it's real easy to say. Nate, but if you can get some kind of run game to compliment Zappi throwing the ball over the yard, what more could you ask for? Second and 10. Zappi looks left, throws for the end zone, too tall, incomplete. And it'll be third down. Now I kind of shift my attention to Charlotte defensively to kind of guesstimate what they're going to do here with coverage. And again, the field shortens a little bit here, so that's kind of advantage Charlotte defensively against this Western squad. Do you bring pressure? And it looks like they're going to try and get some on Zappi, and now Zappi's going to check out of it, so let's see how this one breaks down. Charlotte shows pressure, third and ten. Six-man rush, Zappi well protected, has a chance in the corner, but overthrows Stearns. And a flag comes down at the goal line at the very end of the play. And this is going to be pass interference again against the 49ers. What a tough penalty for Charlotte to take. Yeah, they ran a stunt right then and got pass the pressure that they wanted. Number three, defense. By rule, the ball will be placed at the two-yard line. Automatic. Trey Creamer, the redshirt senior from Cartersville, Georgia, gets the penalty. Well, that seems to be a favorite part of the end zone for Zappi. Two defensive penalties he achieves by throwing it in that spot. And now, I don't know what you do defensively if you're Charlotte here or what you're really looking for. They moved Cofield into the game at the running back spot. Stern's in motion. He's been quiet so far, just one catch. Zappi's targeted him a couple of other times. Both have been wiped out by penalties. First and goal from the two. A flag is down. Zappi kept it into the end zone. 
But a flag came in right away on the snap, and based on that timing, it wouldn't be a surprise if this is against Western, or is it going to be offside against Charlotte for somebody lining up in the neutral zone? Another defensive penalty, and the touchdown will stand. So Zappi has thrown one in, his 30th, and run one in, just his second. A rare rushing touchdown for Bailey Zappi. Well, the big INT, big change in momentum in this game. Charlotte had an opportunity to take the lead. Narvison's extra point is good, and it's a 14-3 Western Kentucky lead. The Hilltoppers provided that opportunity with Zappi's interception. Charlotte gave it back with a Foster interception, and it's an 11-point Hilltoppers lead. Another look at this. Good fake, and Zappi all alone. You say Easiest. walked in a lot, yeah, but he good. really did walk in. <laughs> Easiest touchdown you'll see ever, perhaps. And again, Defensively, what do you do in, the, in that situation? You feel like you're a benefactor by having a short field. That ball inside the 15 around the 10 where they got the penalty and set them up in that manner. And uh, it's just, again, just so many weapons. But Charlotte defensively is going to continue to try various things, if you will, various schemes. Uh, you know, we saw a stunt. We saw pressure from the edge. Uh, we've seen it from up the middle. It's lots of different ways they're trying to get the Zappy and see if they can continue to do that. Continue to kind of have that energy because watching him walk into the end zone has to deflate you a bit. Corey Munson's kickoff again sails over Shadrick Bird to the back of the end zone and Charlotte will take it from the 25. And uh, I feel like we're saying this every drive, but this is the biggest possession so far for the 49ers because they need some kind of answer other than giving this ball right back to Bailey Zappi. Well, it is, and I like to call these kind of stabilization drives. So you've got a couple minute and a half left here in the, in the first quarter. You want to carry that over to the second quarter. You'll get the wind at your back a little bit, although it's died down and the weather's improved a little bit here. But I think you've got to get something done. Ultimately, in the end, Nate, you cannot trade touchdowns and field goals, and that's kind of what we've been seeing so far. So I, I would say you need to have a lengthy possession here, and you need to get a touchdown. Real easy said, right, against this defense that continues to surge and improve. Bird takes it on first down, has a crease, and runs through A.J. Brathwaite to the 41-yard line, a gain of 16, and that's exactly what Charlotte wants to see. Yeah, you need to get the veteran in there, that's for sure. Veteran in terms of being just a sophomore, but he's their leading rusher, Bird, coming in at 317 yards, and that doesn't sound like a lot either. That sounds more like Cofield's numbers for Western in a throw-happy kind of offense, but... And an injury, a, yeah. A hilltopper down. Can't see the, the number from here. Looked like a defensive back who didn't get up at, at the end of the play. And that's Brathwaite who took the worst of that collision with Bird when he got into the secondary. He was essentially the only man at that point standing between Bird and six points, and he slowed him down long enough for some help to arrive for the tackle. And limit Bird to the 16 yards. But uh, Brathwaite has been a big part of this Western Kentucky defense this year. 39 tackles coming in, tied for third on the team. The redshirt sophomore from Miami who only had 18 career tackles his first three years on the Hill. Much bigger role this year. Has missed a, a couple of games, including last week when the Hilltoppers were playing back at his native Miami against FIU. And so this would uh, potentially be a blow for Western Kentucky on the back end of the defense if he's unable to continue. <laughs> Brothwaite also with the defensive touchdown against Charlotte. He's kind of got a history against this team. A very positive one at that, so it looks to be okay. Western Kentucky leads this series three to one all time. Now the Hilltoppers have won the last two in a row. It's the fourth time of five all-time meetings that the game has fallen on homecoming for the hosts. And uh, those teams are three and zero oh the first three times. Western Kentucky trying to keep that going this afternoon. First and 10 for Charlotte. Foster to Tucker over the middle, gets by, lost the football, it's still loose. Who has it at midfield? Both teams had chances. Tucker was losing it, tried to pull it back in, and the ball just exploded away from him right around the red towel logo at midfield. 
Trey Shaw was in there for Western Kentucky, and the Hilltoppers have it. The second turnover for Charlotte in the first quarter, and Western Kentucky is going to be set up with a short field again. Well, you can just see it squirt loose there after the catch and run. And Jaden Hunter came up with it out of the pile for Western Kentucky. The transfer from Georgia is having a big first quarter. And we're kind of losing track of the play calling. And the execution from this Charlotte offense has been pretty much on the mark right then. Tucker very close to converting the first down in that sequence, but just had the ball high around his shoulders and took a pretty good lick there. That's a, that, that's a tough one. So are you ready for another one of these change of possession kind of scenarios? especially with 30 seconds to go in the first half. I think we're going to see the deep ball here again. Zappi with five wide receivers on first down. He went deep for Corley after the interception. Here's some trickery. Backwards pass to Stearns, who changes his mind and wants to run and managed to turn that into a gain of a yard. He was looking for a deep ball to Davis down the sideline, but Charlotte played it well. Yeah, he had a run pass option <laughs> himself at that point in time, and you can see the motion come across. He'll throw immediately to him. That, as you mentioned, is a backwards pass, but what can Stearns not do? Yeah, it's a run for him officially for a yard. It was going to be a pass. That's all that the defenses need to have to account for that, too. Charlotte had allowed only 16 first quarter points all season in seven games. That's 2.3 per game. Western Kentucky hung 14 on the 49ers in the opening period this afternoon. And the Hilltoppers are threatening again after the turnover. They have second down and nine from the Charlotte 49-yard line. Second time they've been set up with a short field already today. Take a look at this formation. First time we've seen the receiver stacked. Now they'll bring Stearns in motion. But again, another look for the Charlotte defense. Zappi for a wide open Tinsley coming back at the 35 and he has a first down to the Charlotte 32 yard line again a 17 and the Hilltoppers go up tempo again. Good recognition of the blitz that time by the middle of the Western offensive line. Throw is high for Stearns, he's stuck in the backfield, breaks a tackle and is slung down at the line of scrimmage for no gain. Jared Stearns has been kept pretty quiet early on. Robitaille had the first contact and Solomon Rogers took care of him. Now the personnel changes that you're seeing Charlotte try and make here are somewhat wholesale and they're intended to slow the game down a bit. I, I know it has a personnel intent. They're able to try and do a little bit of that against this up and down the field Western offense. Zappi, look toward Tinsley. Now on the run across the 30 and stays in bounds to the 25. A nice pickup for Zappi, who does not run very much, but had his second rushing touchdown of the year on Western Kentucky's last possession and scampers for a short gain to the 25. Nor does he want to run, Nate, but he's going to look. and He went through at least three progressions and still was trying to get the ball fake, albeit past the line of scrimmage. And that's pretty good work by Zappi as well. Protected himself, got a few positive yards, and obviously this offense will very much thrive in the live to see another day scenario. Third and three at the 25. Zappy to throw over the middle, caught by Stearns, and he squeaks out of a tackle down close to the 10. It'll be first and 10 for Western Kentucky at the 13. Now defensively, you'll watch the linebacker will just miss it leaning the other way. That was Kelly and kind of a big miss if he just could have got a fingertip on that one. Toward the end zone at the pylon, Tinsley reaches for it, touchdown! Western Kentucky has rattled up 20 points already, not even 17 minutes into the game. Third total touchdown for Bailey Zappi already. Now, Bryson Whitehead is going to have a lot of problems in the corner with Tinsley, and he just can't bring him down. And Tinsley allowed to kind of reach that ball across the goal line inside the pylon for the touchdown. Officials holding things up just for a moment to see if uh, we might have our third review of the afternoon. Braden Narvison is patiently waiting for his extra point attempt. 
Looked from here like Tinsley did get to the pylon, and the officials agree. So Narvison will take the extra point. He is now 33 for 33 this season with his two earlier today. And Western Kentucky has opened up an 18-point lead. Charlotte had some opportunities early on in this first quarter, but a couple of 49ers turnovers cashed in for back-to-back -back Western Kentucky touchdowns. Zappi to Tinsley from 13 yards out. The tops lead 21-3 early in the second. It's a Wild West homecoming theme at Western Kentucky uh, this Saturday afternoon in late October, and these fans are enjoying themselves so far. Hilltoppers up 21 to three early in the second quarter from Bowling Green today. Corey Munson to kick it away for Western Kentucky. Shadrick Bird is deep for Charlotte. And Bird will not get a chance to return it. He hasn't even touched a kickoff yet today, so Charlotte will take it from the 25. And uh, Bob, already the 49ers are getting dangerously close to blowout territory. They've shown, though, some really good signs on offense, just these turnovers that have hurt them. Yeah, and it's been, obviously, turnovers never come at a good time, but it's been a real drive killer. And even early on, they were down a, a touchdown, 7-3, 14-3, going forward on fourth down, were able to convert in what I thought was dangerous kind of territory, but they just couldn't finish the drives. And they must finish this one right here with points. Both turnovers have come in plus territory. James Foster in the shotgun on first down. Hand off to Byrne. Second effort, bounces outside and kept stumbling all the way to the 30. Impressive balance by the redshirt sophomore. And he has a gain of five. Kane just came out of the stack in the middle. Everybody's kind of bunched up right here in the middle and Kane's gonna come down the line and make that tackle. And it's a pretty good effort there for Bird, and they haven't been all that great. Has Charlotte really on first down? It's been second down, been a little bit more successful, and so it's good to see them get there on on first, set themselves up in something manageable. Camp in motion. Foster on the design draw, gets a block from Bird, has a first down and out of bounds at the 40 on a gain of 10. Will Healy has shown a, an interest in using the legs of his young quarterback Foster off the bench and a, a little wrinkle maybe that the 49ers can show Western Kentucky that Chris Reynolds doesn't have as much of. Running backs, you want to get more playing time. Block like Bird just did on the edge. Getting Foster that first down. Foster, or Bird rather, as much responsible for that is as Foster with his legs. And to your point, you know, that's kind of a safety situation for Will Haley to have Foster run, but he's delivered for them. He keeps it on the read option, gets a block from Pearson on the edge and has another five yards before he's knocked out of bounds at the 45. And I believe a lot of this from Charlotte offensively has to do with the kind of looks that they're seeing from Western. Now you look, Western Kentucky's bringing in three new interior linemen. Remember, I mentioned they were rushing four in obvious passing situations. Now it looks like they're gonna go a little bit more with a look that's better suited to deny the run. Tucker in motion. Foster goes that way. Tucker behind his lead blocker, Spencer, who lost his helmet. Just a gain of one for Tucker. And a crowd of Hilltoppers send him to the ground. It'll be third down and five. And I don't blame Spencer after having lost his helmet not to get in that mix because he actually had three red jerseys to block on the edge. Watch Spencer out there. He's got his choice, and he decided that I don't think I'll be a part of that, and I understand why. And obviously, by rule, he has to leave the game. Good work by Beanie Bishop on the edge. Third down and five for Charlotte. Four man rush against Foster. Outside Bird all alone. Look at the green in front of Shadrick Bird. Into the red zone, still going on his feet. Another man misses, and he's all the way down inside the five. It'll be first and goal for Charlotte at the two. 
I think this has a lot to do with the effort of Bird, which you just described, Dave, but a little bit of an imbalance somehow on this western side. And you can see there's no one in the frame right here. Bird gets the handoff on first and goal, and he's down to the one. And when you look at that, particularly look out of the replay, you can kind of see and credit Foster with a recognition. And while they had a wheel route kind of planned for Bird, I think Bird might have even been surprised as to how much field he had to work with. So second down and goal coming up from the one. Tucker and DuBose are in for Charlotte and trying to figure out where they should be lined up. Bird is still the tailback with Foster. And of course, the read option that the 49ers have shown at times can be lethal down at this end, as it was even for Bailey Zappi in the first quarter. Foster keeps it all the way, bounces to the outside, and he's in. Touchdown, Charlotte. The first 49ers TD for the transfer, James Foster, and Charlotte closes it back to two possessions. Well, that's an answer. Demetrius Kane wanted a hold on the left edge, and I think he had a good case, but the Niners got away with it, and they will take it because they need any break they can get to get back in this game. Now, this drive has been all Foster and Bird. Remember I commented on the great block that Bird threw on the edge to get Foster. Remember those two five-yard back-to-back plays where they just kind of worked it, worked it, trying to get better field position, and Bird busted on the big pass play, and here we are, and Charlotte kind of back in business here. Extra point is good, knocked through by Jonathan Cruz, and Charlotte has closed it down to an 11-point deficit. Foster on third down, found Bird for the big play, all the way down to the two, and then the redshirt sophomore transfer from Texas A&M did it himself. After Bird set him up, Foster punches it in, and the 49ers have their first score of the day. Charlotte with its first touchdown of the afternoon on the one-yard scamper by James Foster to make it a 21-10 Western Kentucky lead. But, Bob, the issue for the 49ers has not been moving the ball. It's how can they stop this Western Kentucky offense and a weary defense is going to be headed right back on the field after the Jonathan Cruz kickoff toward Beanie Bishop. It's a short kick. Bishop takes it from the goal line. He can absolutely fly, has a little seam, and gets across the 25, still going to the 30. Good return by Bishop, and Western Kentucky will start it there. But this is a Hilltoppers offense playing so well right now, it doesn't seem like it matters where on the field they start. And Charlotte defensively continues to not just give a vanilla look. They're, they're trying some variations. They're trying everything they can. I, I think it just comes, and it's rooted in a talent issue. You put these talented receivers that Western's got and match that with a quarterback who's just a gunslinger. It's hard to find enough talent just to kind of match up with that. So you try and change your scheme and try and give different looks. Adam Cofield, a rare carry. Western has not run the ball a whole lot in the early stages. That's a pickup of two. Of course, it's the transfers in the passing game who get all the headlines for Western Kentucky. Zappi and Stearns keep among them from Houston Baptist, but Cofield had a nice career for himself as well. Three-time FCS national champion at North Dakota State and has run for over 300 yards and four touchdowns so far this year in Bowling Green. And when you're leading rusher on this team, you're kind of forgotten, right? But not so much with Cofield. He's going to get it right here. Cofield on the perimeter, pass Robitaille out of bounds around the 40. They will give him the first down just barely on a pickup of eight. Cofield back in the Midwest. He was Missouri Player of the Year in high school at Blue Spring South outside of Kansas City, but on defense, not on offense. He won the state title game with over 200 total yards and four touchdowns on offense and three sacks. You want to talk about a shoe-in MVP. Made the, tra the transition quite well to college running back, right? Whittington that, replaces a, him. That's a prerequisite, right, to be a great college running back, to have those numbers defensively in high school? Show a little bit of the dog. Zappi on the RPO, outside to Stearns, down the sideline with a nice first down gain of eight. Sets up second down and two. Charlotte is keyed on Stearns early, but Zappi's still finding ways to get his uh, longtime teammate the football. Yeah, Trey Kramer just made a bad decision then, and just you can see the angle he took, but allowing himself to be blocked 
on the edge to create that opportunity for Stearns, rather, one-on-one. -on -one. And I approach that a little bit differently. So now it's almost as if with the ability to stop the play to get the personnel where they need to be, that Charlotte kind of has a little bit of advantage here to get the people they want onto the field while looking at the lineup that Western puts out. Stearns again on a little pitch pass. That'll go as another catch for him, and he's across midfield with a Western Kentucky first down. Prior to this year, a Hilltoppers receiver had caught 13 or more passes in a game four times in the entire FBS history of the program. Stearns has done it the last four games in a row. If he gets to 16 today, he'll set a new Western Kentucky single season record. Bailey Zappi not happy that the snap is still not allowed with Charlotte making another late substitution. Jalar Haley did not want to go to the game. He was waving his replacement off and the coaching staff literally pushed him onto the field. There's a connection to Tinsley on the sideline. Looks like he has just enough, a gain of 10, and it's a first down. Bailey Zappi took the opportunity between plays to have words with our referee, Scott Harden, and make sure that Charlotte's not given too much time to substitute. First and 10 for the Hilltoppers, with the exception of their interception. Only Zappi's fifth of the year. They have been slicing through this Charlotte defense that allows 450 yards per game this year. Here comes the blitz outside. It's Ratzlaff and he dropped it. One of the less heralded Houston Baptist transfers in the foursome that came along with new offensive coordinator Zach Kitley, but Ben Ratzlaff uh, not able to pull that one in. Sappy threw exactly in the area where the blitz came from Wardlow on the corner. And again, Ratzlaff at a minimum had a first down, maybe even a touchdown, actually. He had inside leverage on that, again, in that area that was vacated by the Blitz. So again, to my point, Charlotte is trying to throw the proverbial kitchen sink at Western Kentucky. Cofield for a gain of two, third down and eight. Almost seems like Charlotte's being deliberate now with not doing these substitutions all at they once are. to take even more time off. Oh, absolutely. You can kind of see that right now. And, for the most part, it's working, but the problem is, is that the impact of the play, it's not impacting. It's not working to their advantage. Yeah, they're taking clock down. They're getting personnel shuffled in and getting that advantage of holding play up, but they're not making the plays when you get that specific personnel into the game. Third and eight. Zappi well protected. Rolls left. Now pressured. Run out of an angle and planted at the 33-yard line by Brian Wallace. This sets up a fourth down and three. Wallace, the redshirt junior from Berryville, Virginia, who was a, a four-time state wrestling champion in high school. I would imagine this is the kind of pin you don't want to be underneath. Well, Wallace just working that zone, staying there. Again, the three-man rush that Charlotte brought didn't really affect Zappi, and he went through at least three, perhaps four progressions before he took to the outside, so yeah. Not where you want Wallace to plant you out, make no mistake. And watch the shift going on here and the personnel changes. Fourth down and three at the 33. Zappi off play action, has Corley juggled and intercepted. Corley had it in his hands, it popped up and out of him, and it's picked off by Justin Wisenhunt, the grad transfer from Troy, with one of his biggest plays of his 49ers career. And you know, you hear coaches talk about you gotta make a play. Well, that was an opportunity that was somewhat forced by the Charlotte defense. Zappy threw into the area vacated by the blitz. See right here, but the bobble is sometimes when you're just fighting for your life if you're Charlotte right now and you get a play like this, you're like, hey, we can hang around here a while. And that's exactly what they hope to take that interception and move it forward. Look at Calvin Camp, has a seam up the middle into Hilltoppers territory and dragged down from behind at the 37. Charlotte with a jolt. That interception and a big run up the middle by Camp for a first down. Whereas you would look at Western Kentucky with a good change of possession situation to throw the deep ball. Well, Charlotte comes back with Camp in the run and a big play, positive territory for Charlotte. Foster off play action, looks to DeBose one on one, jostled at the 10. There is no flag, it's incomplete. 
So second down and 10 coming up. We've talked about it after the two Charlotte turnovers that Western Kentucky has tried to throw deep. Charlotte went the opposite and ran it up the middle, but got the same result of that big play off the change of possession. Hey, it worked. That's an interesting call on first down because we haven't really seen that of Charlotte throwing on first down and throwing the mid ball, not necessarily a deep ball, but a mid-range ball. Opportunity here for Charlotte and you know, perfect world. They can hang on to the ball for the remainder of the half. Might be asking a lot, but no doubt they need to score off of this turnover. Foster on second and 10, steps up and throws late, still even with the line of scrimmage, delivers to camp for a short gain. Gave him four, and that sets up a more manageable third down and six, but uh, impressive awareness by Foster to change his mind at the last moment. And either way, I think he would have been right at four or five yard gain on that had he thrown or ran it. And now you clearly are gonna go for it on fourth down if you're unsuccessful here on third. I mean, we've seen Will Healy and Charlotte go for it right in the midfield range. Down distance, time of the game, all that's going to dictate. This is a two down situation here on third and fourth. Third down, six to go from the 33. Four man rush, Foster under pressure, escapes to the left, more coming, and he's dropped. Jawan Jones and Will Ignat put Foster down to the 39. And if Charlotte wants to go for it now, it'll be fourth down and 12. I still think you've got to go for it now because you've got to use an opportunity to keep the ball out of Bailey Zappi's hands. The pass on first down, I really think, put them out of sequence with what they're wanting to do in this situation. Look and at Foster his... sort of grabbing at his right hand as well, almost like he's grasping maybe his right thumb, and he's just kind of flexing it out. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Charlotte's going to have to use a timeout here. The play clock is down to five already. And indeed, the 49ers will call timeout to make sure that Foster is 100% ready to go and make sure everybody's on the same page for what they want to do with this potential fourth down and 12. Another critical play in this game. Charlotte has had the opportunities. The 49ers need to cash in down 11 late in the first half. James Foster doesn't seem 100%, and so instead of a fourth down and 12, Charlotte is going to try a 56-yard field goal, which would tie Jonathan Cruz's career long, which he set as a freshman all the way back in 2018. This would make it a one-possession lead for Western Kentucky. Big kick from the senior. Cruz gets it away, and it is good! Jonathan Cruz who has been anything but consistent this year, turns back the clock to his second team all-conference status in 2018 and matches his career long with a 56-yard missile to make it a one-score game. It's not good from 57. Watch this, great camera shot. Must have felt like a kickoff to Beanie Bishop all over again. He was waiting for a return, and the ball just kept flying. Eight-point lead for Western Kentucky. Back in a moment. Jonathan Cruz, fresh off the 56-yard field goal, coming through for his head coach, Will Healy, who made the gutsy call with James Foster's right thumb evidently bothering him. They were working on the hand, thumb, wrist area. Will Healy decided against fourth and 12, didn't want to punt from the plus 39, and so Jonathan Cruz drilled it to match a career long and make it just an eight point Western Kentucky lead. The 49ers have rattled off 10 in a row since the Hilltoppers opened it up to a 21-3 advantage. And now with 3.06 to go, Bailey Zappi and the Tops offense comes back on the field and Bob for all of the praise were given Charlotte. Western Kentucky is also going to receive the second half kickoff, so the Hilltoppers have the chance to get two scores here before Charlotte takes another meaningful snap. Yeah, and in this case, if you're Charlotte, you've got to do a one-score game here at the half. Three minutes, six seconds shy of the half. Western Zappi's like, come on. Look <laughs> at how see? quickly they're yeah. lined up out of timeouts. He oh, wants yeah. to go right away. First and 10 over the middle, Corley in the seam, across the 40 and close to midfield. A big first down pickup of 23 yards. 
And before Zappi went to his antics, which is well defined, and my point being is this is huge for Charlotte. And flags down as the next snap occurred. A procedure penalty coming against Western Kentucky. False start. Number 18, offense. And then five yard change penalty. possession and get First set, down. right? They were ready to go. Well, Zappi was wailing his hands in the air to the referee, turning off his right shoulder and complaining to him. He's been working on them all first half. Full start went against Daywood Davis, first year Hilltopper, transfer from Oregon, who uh, Duck said coach Mario Cristobal called the most unselfish player he's ever coached. Guy who has uh, experience in Conference USA as well, formerly at Florida International. Zappi steps up. Well protected and a late decision to throw. Finds Davis in space. Davis after the catch inside the 30 and out of bounds. Bailey Zappi picked his eyes up and found Davis at the last moment. Now, schematically, you got to ask yourself if you're Charlotte, how did Davis get that wide open? Because it was late in the play. It wasn't as if he created something for himself. Instead, he just kind of drifted over much behind the linebackers, and there was no topside help for Charlotte. First and 10 from the 27. Five-man rush. Deep ball for Tinsley. Knocked away. Good coverage by Trey Creamer, who you've mentioned has been beat once or twice in this first half, but he was all over Tinsley one-on-one. -on -one. Actually, that spot of the field's not been uh, kind to Creamer, and that time right then, good technique, had inside technique. No interception try. Simply batted the football down. It was a good play. Western Kentucky's only had the ball for a minute off the clock, and it's second down and 10 from the Charlotte 37. Five wide for Zappi. 49ers bring three. Zappi to the outside for Tinsley, and he is wrapped up immediately by Creamer. Back-to-back -back good plays by the Richard senior transfer from Cardinalsville, Georgia, and it's a third down and four coming up. And no doubt four down territory. If you're Western Kentucky here, Creamer with a good open field tackle. Noah Whittington in as the running back next to Zappi with four wide receivers. Zappi to throw, well protected. Stearns in the end zone. Touchdown, Hilltoppers. Zappi to Stearns for the 11th time this year. And Western Kentucky answers right back to make it a two score game again. Marcus Robitaille with outstanding coverage. This is just working together a lot. Just attributed that touchdown there, Stearns and Zappi. But Robitaille with very good coverage then. Zappi goes up and gets it. And uh, for Uncle Sam in the end zone there with the glasses, the future is so bright, you got to wear shades. <laughs> Certainly looks that way for Western Kentucky today, for Bailey Zappi for as long as he's slinging the pigskin. Narvis attacks on the extra point. That's four touchdowns for Bailey Zappi. Three through the air to three different receivers and one on the ground. Zappi to Stearns. Worked in Houston and it's working in Bowling Green. Zappi is thrown for 32 touchdowns this year. 11 of them to Jared Stearns. Over Robitaille in the end zone. Touchdown tops. Robitaille's just got to turn around in that situation. And again, the coverage wasn't all that bad. And this is the worst case scenario for Charlotte, right, Nate? You, you touched on it just moments ago. 3.06, the drive starts. It takes them, what, a minute and a half to score another six. We're going to get the football back to begin the second half. If anything, they scored a little bit too fast and did leave some semblance of an opportunity here for Charlotte, although the 49ers have only one timeout left. Will be fun to see what James Foster can do if he's given the opportunity, assuming that his right hand is feeling up to it. Munson's kick is going to be returnable for Bird on the run at the 11. Takes it to the right side with good blocking. Makes Munson miss in the middle of the field. Two different flags are down. As it stands, it's a 20-yard return for Bird out to the 31-yard line. These flags, based on the fact that the officials are placing them right next to each other, look like they're probably for the same infraction around the 20-yard line. 
How about Corey Munson, the kicker, flying down the middle of the field, trying to make a tackle around the 25 There is no line. foul on the play. The player was blocked into the contact. It'll be first down. No foul. There was a block that had uh, taken a player into some illegal contact. So the return will stand of 20 yards. Western Kentucky trying to go for the shorter kickoff and presumably to take some time off the clock. You see the potential block in the back there, and the Hilltoppers crowd doesn't like it. Instead, Charlotte's going to get slightly better field position at the 31 with 81 ticks left with which to work and Foster back behind center. I think you try Foster on a run to see if you can just break something here early on and then maybe settle into your offense. I don't think you really need to be uh, of the gambling type in this situation. Foster hands it to Bird. Right side, nothing there. He's swallowed up by Ship. Tackle for loss, and Tyson Helton uses his first timeout. Second and 11 coming up, and he still has two left in his pocket. So if Charlotte doesn't get a first down, Western Kentucky is going to get the ball back with a chance to score. And in my opinion, that's another reason why you want to run the football here and maybe even run your quarterback here if you're Charlotte. At least force him to take those timeouts, but keep it on the ground. Don't give them another timeout with an incomplete pass, perhaps. 28-13, the Western Kentucky lead. We thought we would see plenty of offense, and the Tops have brought that, although it took their offense a lot longer to get going last Saturday night in Miami against FIU. Western Kentucky had only 34 points in that win over the Panthers. It was really a smooth outing for the Tops, who in the end won by 15. They controlled the game more so than that, but the offense is starting to click, and this is even with two turnovers. Quite in contrast to the other Florida school, as Charlotte played on Thursday night, and they got boat raced in the second half. 38-9 was the FAU win last Thursday night. Foster keeps it. He was hit by Malone behind the line of scrimmage, but dragged him for a couple of yards. So it'll be third down and nine. Western Kentucky uses another timeout with a minute 11 to go. One timeout left for the Hilltoppers. Same plan if you're Will Healy? Yeah, I'm still of the opinion you've got to try and run the football. It's also a part of the field where you can't be super aggressive if you're Charlotte offensively. You run the risk of a turnover at that point in time and you probably feel with the experienced defensive secondary here of Western, you might be able to bring some more pressure as well. We've only seen one combined punt in this first half. It was on Charlotte's very first possession, and Bailey Rice did not get off a good one. It netted only 17 yards. But if the 49ers don't pick up this first down, Rice is going to be back on the field momentarily. Third and nine for Charlotte. Foster on the design draw. Plenty of red shirts in the area, and he's swallowed up after a gain of two. Timeout Tyson Helton, his third and final, but a minute 06 left for Bailey Zappi and the Western Kentucky offense. So this has been, what, a 15 seconds off the clock type of drive for Charlotte? And it's not what they wanted. Again, they've been struggling on first down, but okay on second and converted their fair share of thirds. On the season, they're only doing 41% on third down in terms of conversion. Tyson Helton just counting everybody up, making 100% sure he has the right number of players on the field. The last thing he wants to do is take a silly penalty at this stage. And normally that's the job of a grad assistant, but that's attention to detail by your head coach. Hey, what about the quote he made in the press conference Monday? They said, uh, you know, you gonna, anything special for homecoming? He said, yeah, I'll put my $99 cold suit on and walk in the parade. Yeah, they were and he did just him, that today. They were asking him <laughs> if he might crack out the cowboy hat or boots that he's a uh, said he's known to wear occasionally on special occasions, and it is a Wild West homecoming theme. Rice runs up for the punt. He got a lot into this one after a subpar first effort today, but it's going to bounce all the way inside the five and out of bounds inside the one. Can you believe that punt by Bailey Rice? 66 yards all net, put the ball at the one-yard line. Good luck, Bailey Zappi. That's perfection. I mean, you seriously, Nate, you can't do any better than this. Watch this ball just nestle in front of the pylon and out of bounds. It's actually between the one and the goal line. 
They have the ball right on the one, and I agree with you. I think it should be backed up essentially as far back as it can be without the back point of the ball on the goal line. That is absolutely up against the pylon. Zappi still in the shotgun on first down. Hand off to Whittington. He's out of the end zone with a short gain. We'll see if the Hilltoppers still want to go quickly, even backed up at their own end. They are out of timeout, so this play alone is going to take a good chunk of the time they had remaining. Second down and seven for Zappi. This time he's going to throw to the outside. A jumping catch by Craig Burt Jr., his first involvement today. The junior from Columbus makes his 10th catch of the year, and now Western Kentucky picks up the pace, but the clock is running again already, down to 25 seconds. The tops will need to go down the field. Zappi has lots of time, rolls out, slings sidearm over the middle, and Burt makes the catch at the 28. 16 seconds to go. Western Kentucky probably has time for one more throw. They probably and spike it here. They're going to stay in the shotgun. The good news is they are very comfortable working quickly. This offense does it all the time. Catch on the outside by Thomas, but he's short of the first down, and that will run out the first half. So Dakota Thomas and Craig Burt Jr. combined for three catches, but Western Kentucky was backed up just a little too deep by Bailey Rice. 28-13, Hilltoppers lead it at halftime in Bowling Green. Western Kentucky leads 28-13 over Charlotte at halftime. Bailey Zappi has accounted for all four touchdowns for the Hilltoppers, three through the air and one on the ground. They gather Bob Belbin back to uh, take you through some of the first half highlights. Zappi into the corner of the end zone to Daywood Davis. That was Western Kentucky's first touchdown of the afternoon. The Hilltoppers led by as many as 18 out to a 21-3 advantage. They did have a couple of turnovers, did not punt a single time. Here's Zappi's walk-in rushing touchdown. And uh, Charlotte did have some good moments, but ultimately, as expected, Bailey Zappi really was the story of the first half. Well, as you mentioned, as expected, there were points in time in this first half where Charlotte seemed to kind of get their legs underneath them. This is the Foster touchdown run. So he matches Zappi with touchdown runs in the first half for whatever stat that is. And then this field goal here, very late, a 56-yarder by Cruz. But to your point, Nate, the problem was they left too much time on the clock. Yeah, more than three minutes. Western Kentucky needed only a minute and a half to go down for a touchdown strike from Zappi to Jareth Stearns, the 11th touchdown grab of the season for Stearns, who has gone over 1,100 yards this year to lead the nation. 28-13 is the Western Kentucky lead. If you were Will Healy in the Charlotte locker room, Bob, what's the message? How do you think you can get back in there? Well, I think you focus on the punt under a minute to go that pinned Western Kentucky inside their own one and said, this is what we're capable of doing in spots. This is what we're capable of doing on special teams. I need a three and out to begin the second half knowing that Western Kentucky will get the football to begin, and then we'll build on it from there. We'll get back to doing some of the basic things we were doing with our quarterback, Foster. See what we can do from there. Western Kentucky up 15 at the half. Western Kentucky leads 28-13 over Charlotte at the half. Nate Gatter, Bob Belvin back with you this afternoon on ESPN+. Plus. Certainly you wouldn't watch the first half and think the defense was the highlight, but there were some good moments, uh, in particular in that first quarter. Uh, Charlotte got some, some good play for the backup safety, Marcus Robitaille, and uh, Western Kentucky got a lot from Jaden Hunter, the Georgia transfer. Well, it's what the defense does and the kind of situations it puts you into if you're offensively Charlotte, and that's a highlight right there, kind of denying that running game, and then they got the Foster into having to throw the football, and that's a big interception there along the sideline by Kane. You can see just kind of takes it away from the intended receiver, and that obviously led to a Western Kentucky touchdown. But sometimes when you look at these packages and you see the success that they're having, stopping the run and one element of it kind of moved Charlotte to trying to run with Foster at times, and they kind of shut that down. Then they got Bird going for a while, but guess what? A lot of that was between the 20s. And that's why our score now is 28-13. So it's really important, again, 
uh, for Charlotte to have a stop here to begin the second half, but to continue to stick with that run game. It's still a two-score game at this point in time, and uh, we know the ability of Western Kentucky to score quickly. So you've got to chew some clock up running the game, and that's fine and dandy, but you also got to be successful in doing it. you got to convert. Charlotte probably didn't do enough of that in the first half. Yeah, I was just going to say that, Bob. It's going to be a really important first possession out of the uh, halftime break for the Charlotte defense because if they can keep Western Kentucky from scoring, it's only a two-possession game with almost an entire second half to play. Gives the 49ers an opportunity really to stick with that running game where they have had some success and can control the clock. Still at the half in Bowling Green. Western up 15. A new homecoming queen has been crowned in Bowling Green this halftime with Western Kentucky up 28-13 over Charlotte at the break. And uh, we have major Conference USA Championship crown implications on the line today with uh, Western Kentucky and Charlotte both 2-1. and one. Marshall looks like it's going to win and move to 3-1 and one in uh, what had been a four-way tie in first place in the East Division in Conference USA coming into the day. Florida Atlantic will play later on tonight against UTEP, and so uh, the winner of this game will be in uh, either a two- or three-way tie in first place in the East. Both of these teams have had disappointments, Bob, in non-conference and early on in conference play. Charlotte's certainly not happy to lose by four possessions at home last week against FAU. At the same time, all of their goals are in front of them. Tyson Helton talked in particular about the fact that Western Kentucky still controls its own destiny at this point. If the Hilltoppers win out, which is a difficult task, they'll be headed to the Conference USA Championship game, and it's right there in front of them to win a ring. And even though we're on the verge of November, that's not coach speak. That's mathematical facts when you talk about that and Will Healy said the same about his team as well I mean but at this point in time they're struggling here at halftime to get to that point and don't forget the big Duke win to open the season for Charlotte and Will Healy and then the misses as you mentioned Michigan State Indiana here for Western Kentucky oh my uh, that's really one that we'd like to have back and those two really jump out at you as well as uh, at West Point and Army back on September 11th so those are things that you know you can look back on and kind of uh, you know analyze and but you can't fret over it and that's exactly what Tyson Helton's message and Will Healy's message was still got a lot to play for there's still a lot to play for in this football game Bailey Zappi's become a fan favorite here in Bowling Green, and he's shown us why today. Four first-half touchdowns to build this Western Kentucky lead. Four first-half touchdowns for Bailey Zappi. Three through the air and one on the ground, and Western Kentucky has a 28-13 lead on homecoming in Bowling Green at halftime. Nate Gatter back with you. Bob Belville alongside, so glad you could join us on this Saturday afternoon where uh, it's been overcast most of the day. Some rain coming down earlier before kickoff. Got a little bit of it as the game has gone on. We saw a little sun as well in the first half. That has uh, pretty much gone away. Two turnovers from both teams. Bailey Zappi has been intercepted twice today after he threw only four picks all season prior to this game, although it should be noted the second one really was not his fault at all. He hit Malachi Corley right between the ones in his number 11 on a fourth down. The ball was juggled and intercepted by Charlotte. The 49ers have given two of, them, two of them back. As a result of Western Kentucky's four touchdowns and two turnovers, Hilltoppers punter John Haggerty, who's having a phenomenal season in his very limited opportunities, has not yet seen the field today. This is Western Kentucky's eighth game, and John Haggerty has only been allowed to punt the football 15 times. He's been phenomenal when he's given his opportunities, and of course he won't be too upset not to be on the field. It's sort of like a goalkeeper in soccer, goaltender in hockey, not asked to do a lot. You understand that that's good for the, the team ultimately, but uh, at the same time, he... Uh, Pretty te impressive testament to Western Kentucky's offense so far, but there has not been a single punt. So, Bob, we mentioned it earlier in the halftime, but this is going to be a monstrous possession, especially for Charlotte defensively, because if the 49ers, first of all, want to hold on to much of any chance to win this football game, and certainly if they want the ability to run the football as often as they'd like and control the clock in the second half, they have to keep it a two-possession game. And I think that's kind of the emphasis. Obviously, you break up offense defense when you're in the locker room at halftime, but I think that's the emphasis and the crux of entirely what Charlotte wants to do in the second half 
they've got to accomplish on this first possession or the rest of it is kind of null and void in, in my estimation because, you know, you look at 28, that's real simple. It's two touchdowns a quarter. That's pretty much what uh, Western Kentucky has been averaging. So I, I think that's their sole focus. I, I think they're leaning exactly to this first possession. Gentlemen, we got to make it happen here or we're in deep trouble and there's nobody in this room that's going to deny it. So let's see what they come out with. Beanie Bishop takes a knee, and Western Kentucky will start from the 25-yard line. We'll see what kind of tempo the Hilltoppers use. There's one thing we've noticed so far today. It's not only how fast they go, but the way that Bailey Zappi likes to have them completely lined up and ready as soon as the officials put the ball down. A little confusion there. That ball appropriately is put on the hash mark nearest where the ball exited at the back of the end zone. They almost were putting it toward the middle of the field. And again, a little bit of a defensive schematic twist here early for Charlotte. They're going to go back to rushing four. Might have been some movement up front. The play is blown dead with a flag. Western Kentucky has been penalized rather often this year. Five-yard penalty. That's kind of Still a small victory. You see Will Healy get very excited about it on the Charlotte sideline. Honestly, that's kind of a victory there as well. You're coming out of halftime. You're coming out of a dead ball. And we've seen that twice now with Western Kentucky this afternoon with premature starts. And so, you know, to have them first and 15, that's a little bit of a win here as well if you're really going to split hairs, Charlotte defensively. Zappi goes out for Corley, and he is hit almost right away, limited to a gain of just two yards. Good job by Michael Kelly, the redshirt sophomore on the defensive line, hustling all the way out to make first contact. Now look for them to work away from Kramer. They're going to bring Davis out on Kramer, bottom of your screen. Uh, that, that's the uh, that's the matchup I'm keeping an eye on. Or check that. That's going to be Howard is going to pick up Davis at the bottom of your screen. Second and 13 from the 22. Zappi to throw. Has Tinsley on the sideline, makes the catch, but has it jarred free by Solomon Rogers, and he was juggling all the way, the officials say incomplete. That's a great move by Rogers because on the back end, they didn't have a deep man defensively for Charlotte, so Rogers is going to come to the Western Kentucky sideline and make the play. So many times have you seen targeting plays like that. That's a great play by Rogers fundamentally to square up take the receiver out, cause him to bobble the ball, no possession. Big third down and 13 for the Charlotte defense, and they jumped. Free play for Zappi. Deep middle for Stearns, incomplete, no flag. And there is a flag. It comes down very late around the Charlotte 45-yard line. Not only did the 49ers jump to give Western Kentucky a free play, but the tops are going to get a pass interference call and an automatic first down if this is against the Niners. That could have easily be offensive pass interference as well. <laughs> there are two fouls. Here's one Both replay I'm defense. looking forward to. Offside, number 97. That penalty is declined. Pass interference, number five. Tyler Murray, defense. the linebacker, was trying to go penalty. step for step Automatic. with Jarrett Stearns, the nation's leading receiver. That is not a winning matchup for the 49ers. Watch in the middle of your screen. I thought right there Stearns pushed off. Classic case of why I'm up here, but that's a big play negatively for Charlotte in that case. They uh, may have had him stopped. Stearns has a tunnel up the middle, makes one miss, and stumbles to the 48, a pickup of 11 at a first down. Western Kentucky starting to feed him the football, and the Hilltoppers picking up the pace. Zappi has the snap already. Look deep for Burt, instead drops it off for Winnington. To the sideline, he shoved out of bounds by Marquise Watts at the Charlotte 44-yard line after a gain of eight. Charlotte trying to throw some different formations defensively, but you can see just stepping into the middle of the play is Wisenhunt, and then he just drops off. So he's not even giving the look. He'll give a look, and he's going to bring pressure from the edge, and this time he's just going to stay right at that linebacker depth. Second and two. Trickeration for Davis. He's hit in the backfield, and he is dropped. Marcus Robitaille again. The redshirt sophomore in with no John Alexander at safety. Has a pick and two tackles for loss. This backs Western Kentucky up eight yards. 
Now that's a little redemption for Robitaille. Remember, he was the victim of the Davis catch for the touchdown back in the first half. And he had that reverse played excellent right there to meet him when he picked up the football. Third down and 10 for Western Kentucky. Charlotte jumped again, but was Western Kentucky already moving? Three flags come down, and the officials are going to have to convene and determine where this penalty is going. It's going to be a false start on Western Kentucky. False start. Number 78, offense, five-yard penalty. Quintavious Third Leslie, down. the left guard from Rome, Georgia, a freshman, although in his second year, was the victim of the false start penalty. Moved that left arm and moved the... At the risk of repeating myself, this is the biggest third down of the afternoon for Charlotte right here. They've got to stop Western Kentucky right here. Third and 15. Zappi for Corley. Too far in front of him. Incomplete. No flags. And Western Kentucky, for the first time today, will have to punt. Not to take anything away from Charlotte, but that's Western Kentucky stopping themselves in that case. And we've seen, you know, we get so accustomed to Zappi just throwing the ball on target. He's been off a little bit this afternoon, and in that case, uh, just a little too far to convert it. He had Corley with some inside leverage and was able to get the first down if he can just make that pass. And won't hear that too often. Time to go down under, Nate. Australian punter John Haggerty gets it away. End over end, bounces around the 30 and takes a great Hilltoppers bounce all the way down inside the 15. And it's down at the 12 yard line. John Haggerty has not had many chances this year. In fact, his 52 and a half yard average would be second in the country, but he doesn't have enough punts to qualify for the national leaders. That's better than the all time single season FBS record. And he's just wondering, hey Bailey, can I get a few more punts in, set a record here? That's an internal conflict you and I probably don't need to get involved in <laughs> as well. At some point in time, the sports information staff here at Western Kentucky will be able to create some kind of notation in the record books how well Haggerty has been punting the football when given the chance. So Charlotte takes over, down two scores, first and 10 from the 12. Foster has both of his backs, gives it to Bird. Wrapped up by Kane around the 15. Call it a gain of four to the 16-yard line, second and six. And that's what Charlotte wants to do in this second half. Keep the clock moving and stay on schedule. And be better on first down. And four yards on first down is perfectly fine if you're Charlotte. You want to go ahead and kind of slow down this Western Kentucky offense or just limit their opportunities. And by doing so, you got to win that time of possession battle and it's, it's really again it's splitting hairs but four yards on first down at this juncture for Charlotte is a good thing. Handoff again this time Calvin Camp who had that big run late on in the first half and he gets to the 20 back to back four yard carries and if you get those all day you're going to rack up an awful lot of first downs. Well there's good line push from the right side of the line then for Charlotte and that's Emmanuel and Gist over there on the right side and You'll notice they were beyond where Bird was tackled. So they're getting a good push with the run block. No Garrett. Chris Reynolds today, the Charlotte starting quarterback after his hand injury last week against FAU, and now a third down and short for James Foster. Dare I say another big third down here with the risk of repeating myself, this time on the offensive side. DeBose in motion, camp up the middle, has a hole and has the first down. Good tackle at the 24-yard line by Antoine Kincaid, but not until another four-yard pickup and another Charlotte first down. Speaking of repeating ourselves, three straight four-yard carries. Now Charlotte Will Healy will be very pleased with that and kind of watch Foster, you know, he had that thumb wrist injury somewhere in the right hand wrist thumb area and doesn't seem to have any ill effects of it. He's putting his hands in his gloves because it's gotten extremely cold here after homecoming <laughs> it's, or the court itself it seemed like it's dropped another five seven degrees and the mist is coming down in bowling green play action foster wanted to go downfield tucker on the comeback route makes the catch on the sideline gain of 11 at a charlotte first down tucker has been quiet compared to Jarrett Stearns on the other side, but he is a big time threat for the 49ers. Watch how well Foster feels the pressure coming for his right, just slides a little bit. 
and then Tucker will come back and make the catch right at the first down marker. Second team All-Conference USA last year, second leading receiver in 49ers history, more than 2,700 career yards, and he's enjoyed plenty of success against Western Kentucky in his career. Three games against the Hilltoppers prior to this one, 315 yards. Camp in motion on first down. Foster uh, to the right side gets Elijah Spencer for the first time today. Another gain of 11, another Charlotte first down. The 49ers have moved the chains three times already on this drive in five plays. Now Spencer's the freshman, and one of those players, Will Healy, talked about, hey, uh, a lot of school, their schools are looking at him as well. And uh, a big catch for the 49ers program. And, Keeping him in Charlotte will be a good thing going forward and finding him inside of this offense. And now all of a sudden, a little bit of a better passing effort, passing game from Foster and the Charlotte offense. Bird in motion. Camp on first down, cuts it back toward midfield. He's twisted down after a gain of four. Good play and good pursuit by LaShawn Terrell, the redshirt sophomore D tackle from Hogansville, Georgia, but it's another four yard pickup. Terrell's been another one. I know I've kind of remarked about six or seven different ones Western defensively, but he has really been coming on here lately and had a season high in tackles last week against Texas San Antonio here. Terrell redshirted in 2018 and then had 2019 cut short by injury, missed all of last year with injury, but making an impact this season. Camp has a hole, stutter steps, and gets forward to the 45. Another good tackle by Kincaid. But again, if Kincaid's making tackles however good they are, Charlotte will take that, getting to the second and third level. At the risk of repeating myself, it's third down again. It's third and one. Field position has changed a lot. Watch the move Camp makes to cut and veer to the outside. And a nice open field tackle by Kincaid. That was a solo one. Two-time honorable mention, All-Conference USA, Antoine Kincaid, along with uh, D'Angelo Malone, who we've hardly talked about today, and Jeremy Darvin on the defensive line, the first tops to ever let her five times in program history, taking advantage of the extra COVID year. Third and one for the 45. Bird in the backfield with Foster, and a flag comes in. The play clock had hit zero, and... The back judge decided it was just close enough to be delay a game. That's a big five-yard penalty for Charlotte. Third down and six instead of third down and one. Yeah, that is that is huge. Again, you're still a struggling offense and have that kind of penalty because let's be real, you got a lot of 31 plays in your playbook, no doubt. Why that was not executed and the team getting to the line of scrimmage in ample time is beyond me, but that's that's a big penalty, and that does change your play call here now, third and six. Now three wide receivers for Foster, four-man rush, steps up, jump pass for DuBose, who has it for a first down inside the 40. Foster improvises and makes it work, a gain of 11, and Charlotte is inside Western Kentucky territory down to the 39. Watch Hunter Kelly and Panda ask you, 53 on the left side, pick up the blitz. That allows Foster just to step forward. Now Foster didn't have a lot of room to work with and finds his guy DuBose for the first down. Big conversion. For a team on the season that's only 41%, I don't know, 41%, that's not too bad, but you look at teams now at this point in time of the season, you take the FCS opponents out of it, you should be about upper 40s. Is Pretty much a common number you'll see. Bird stumbles forward around the 36. The officials on either side have different spots by about a yard. They're going to call it a pickup of two. It'll be second down and eight. You really like this drive. What you really got to like if you're Charlotte is watching that clock just kind of tick down a little bit. There's still 21, 22 minutes left in this game overall, but just being able to just get it manageable. And Foster seems to have more control of this offense. Look at this set we're looking at right now. Haven't seen that yet from Charlotte. Hand off to Bird, left side. He's hit around the line of scrimmage and ridden down after a short gain. Call it another two yards before Simpkins makes the tackle to set up another third down and six. 
and Jeremy Darvin there just kind of sliding down the line. The linebackers themselves were not fooled by the motion, although Charlotte ran away from the motion in that particular play. Darvin just continuing that push. He wears the big zero. How about that? I love the Darwin story about zero on the D-line and uh, came down there and made it. First player in Western Kentucky history to wear number zero, and he's doing it at 300 pounds of defensive tackle. Bird in motion. Foster keeps it on the design quarterback draw inside the 35 and down to the 31. This will set up fourth down and two. And there's a Charlotte 49er down on the field, an offensive lineman. And Will Healy is first out there to check on his man. Big decision coming up for him, but he has uh, the well-being of his players on his mind first. We'll step aside for the injury. Fourth and two after the break for Charlotte, down 15. Fourth down and two coming up for Charlotte. The injury was to Jackson Hughes, helped off the field by the training staff and his head coach, Will Healy. And Charlotte is leaving the offense on the field. James Foster, the backup quarterback in his first collegiate start, with one of the biggest plays of the afternoon for the 49ers. Bird is the tailback. Foster to throw, and it's batted down at the line by Ship. He was looking for DuBose, who was open, but Darius Shipp makes another big play, and Western Kentucky holds on fourth down. Really interesting here. Foster really held on to the football at the point of getting the catch. Watch this. Hold, 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 hold. Then gets into it. I don't think that had anything to do with Shipp being able to release and bat the ball down like he should as a defensive lineman. But that was really odd because I've, I've seen – Foster be much more decisive in that. And I wonder if that was by design, the amount of time he held the football after receiving the snap. Bailey Zappi back of the field. Noah Whittington gets the carry on first down, has a seam to the left side across the 35, and Robitaille drags him down at the 37 after a gain of six. A lot of Whittington since the first quarter. It was Cofield early on. It's been mostly Whittington since. Watch Quintavis Leslie on the edge right there. He might have gotten away with a hold. Big guy was injured earlier. Good to see him back in the game. Second down and four from the 37. Zappi keeps it and just throws it away. It was an RPO look, and he was going to pull it and throw to Corley, who was then covered up. Zappi was fortunate to notice it in time to at least not throw a dangerous pass. Yeah, that was an odd one because he gets on the outside of the tackle and kind of holds right there in that RPO that you talked about. Uh, another third down, Nate, just saying. Well drilled, the uh, Western Kentucky offensive lineman, too, with as long as Zappi held that, even on a run pass option, not to be illegally downfield. On third down, Corley in traffic is hammered. A flag comes in, and I think this is going to be targeting. The Charlotte coaching staff can't believe it. From our angle, they have good reason. It might be interference against the 49ers, but the flag came from far away and might have been for the hit, which didn't look like it was to the head or neck area. Western Kentucky has gotten the benefit of some big penalties in this game, especially in offense. Number four, defense. And it's pass interference against Geo Howard, foul. the Automatic. senior transfer for First Purdue, down. another Massive penalty against Charlotte's defense. And here's an ironic thing. Stearns, as you see him come across the middle, was actually a decoy of sorts. And that throw right there, I don't know. I don't know about that as DPI. And they called it on Geo Howard, who was nowhere around the play. Murray was in the area along with Matt Martinez. Zappi to the sideline for Tinsley, who's open inside the 40 and out of bounds. Western has liked finding that little soft spot in the cover two along the sideline, and Zappi delivers for a big game. And not only that, Zappi with a rush from the right side and stayed in and was able to deliver it. That's a pretty good play, and you're right. That soft spot has been a good spot. Watch Zappi just find it. Perfect spot along the sideline. So first down and 10 for the Hilltoppers at the Charlotte 33-yard line. Kai Robichaux, the true freshman tailback, is in for the first time. He got more action last week against FAU, or FIU, I should say, with Whittington not available. 
Another RPO. It's Stearns on the outside. Good block by Davis, and Stearns has a first down along the sideline of the 21. A dozen more for Zappi to Stearns. Will Healy begging for a call against Davis, who was locked up on the perimeter with Howard, but it's a first down for the top. Yeah, Davis made that play, to your point, and to Will's disgust, being able to block. And in these scenarios where you make that throw that Zappi just did to the two receivers either side, you've got great blocking receivers. And I don't think we've talked a lot about that as well, but you can see, and keep an eye on this as the game develops at that point in time to be able to see how well some of these receivers block, not only at the line of scrimmage, but downfield. First carry for Robichaux inside the red zone, down around the 18-yard line, call it a gain of three for the true freshman from Columbus, Georgia. So we started with Cofield, then we brought Winnington in. Now we see Robichaux. Western Kentucky has been good in the red zone this year, although hasn't converted as many of these into touchdowns as you would expect. 89% of red zone possessions have been scoring drives, but only 59% have ended in the end zone. That's why Narvison was player of the week last week, right? Zappi for Ben Ratzlav. One of those less heralded HBU transfers, part of the quartet that came over with Zach Kitley, the new offensive coordinator. Had a drop in the first half, but secures this one. Western quickly ready on first and goal. Zappi has time, peels to the left, throws low from his sidearm slot, incomplete. Ratzlaff nearly came up with it. And in a year of highlights for Zappi, that would have been one of the earliest plays in the reel. And when you see the linebacker vacate the area where the gunslinger side armor makes the throw from. Watch him, there's nobody in that zone right there. When the pressure came to him, that's what gave him that passing window, but he couldn't complete it with a pure overhand and stopping and setting his feet. Instead, he's gonna fling it from the hip. Good coverage by Solomon Rogers in the end zone for Charlotte. Blake Lock running down on the tops, two to snap it. Zappi gets it off, over the middle, an easy touchdown on the goal line all alone for Dalvin Smith. Fifth touchdown today, fourth through the air for Bailey Zappi, and Western Kentucky has opened it up again. Boy, the big third down conversions that were missed by Charlotte. This is what it leads to. A lot of high fives and handshakes for the red and white. And it might have been one of the longer drives of the afternoon so far. We'll have to check the numbers on it. Generally, it's been that quick strike. Four touchdown passes, four different players. Tops on a roll. Western Kentucky 35 and Charlotte 13 with two minutes and change to go in the third quarter. Nate Gatter, Bob Belvin back with you from Bowling Green where Western Kentucky will be kicking away after a fifth touchdown. Zappi has run one in and he's thrown four of them in. Tinsley, Stearns, Davis, and Smith. Four different receivers have all caught touchdowns. Malachi Corley, the only heavily used one still missing. Squib kick is fielded awkwardly at the 27-yard line by Jake Clemens, one of the reserve tight ends, who did eventually pull it in and immediately go to ground. So Charlotte will take over from the 27. We'll head right back to break. Bailey Zappi over the middle to Smith for the touchdown. Western Kentucky has opened it back up. Tops by 22 with two to go in the third. Some hardcore fans in Bowling Green sticking it out even as the mist comes down in a cooling Saturday evening in Bowling Green where the Hilltoppers lead 35-13. That's a little bit of what it looks like from the end zone shot right about now. James Foster takes over with his Charlotte offense first and 10 from the 27 after Zappi's fourth touchdown pass of the day. Foster under pressure, throws behind his intended receiver and incomplete. He was looking for Shedrick or, Sir, or uh, Dante Armstrong, I should say, redshirt freshman tight end. The 49ers are reaching deep into the tight end group because their top receiving tight end of the year, Taylor Thompson, redshirt freshman from Prattville, Alabama, 
suffered a serious knee injury last week against FAU, tore his ACL and MCL, and will miss the remainder of the season. And we've yet to see Cam Dollar. And we were told earlier, as early as this afternoon, prior to the game, we might see some of him as well. So again, some more problems in that receiving core. Hand off to Bird up the middle, has a good gain across the 30, pick up a four. But uh, when it's second down and 10, a four yard gain doesn't work as well as first and 10. And another third down and medium coming up now for Charlotte. Another opportunity to convert here with 90 seconds to go in the third quarter. Now, I'm not so sure you just don't run the football here as well. Uh, uh, as this rain or heavy mist comes down even more, it's becoming increasingly difficult to throw the football. And don't say that to Western Kentucky because chances are they'll throw it across the yard again. But uh, And also, this is an instance where you practice in these kinds of conditions. Big blitz outside to McKeecher, and he's hit in the backfield and slung down for a loss. Khalif Alassi not fooled, and Charlotte will have to send the punt team right back out on fourth down. That's a second or third Alassi tackle that I can recall where he's, it's been a tackle for loss on a pass play. He's got really good speed coming up from the secondary and been a welcome addition to this Western Kentucky team. When I saw him back in week one, I was like, you know, they're coming around and well, we see coming around when we get into league play, you've seen those numbers. You always want to separate those numbers when you look at them, when you do what you and I do, and look at league play and look at overall. It's a fake. Victor Tucker runs left, has blocking, but he stopped. Needed the 37 for a first down. He's three yards short. Charlotte tried the fake punt in desperation, and instead, with 20 seconds to the end of the third quarter, Western Kentucky takes it back with its best field position of the day, and that is saying something. I don't know if you want to give them the football in that short of field. Maybe if you were 10, 15 yards more toward the center of the field or midfield, you might want to try that. But that's Will Healy, and I'm going to pull out all the stops here. He's not going to leave Bowling Green tonight. Well, that have emptied out the playbook, and that's got to be one of them there as well. So we'll see if Zappi can add to his numbers here because you know he's excited about this opportunity. A Western Kentucky win would be the Hilltoppers third in a row, get to the 500 on the year at 4-4. Four and four. Zappi to Jared Stearns, has room after the catch, and slides down at the 27-yard line with a gain of seven on first down. That's a little bit misleading, though, because three of Western Kentucky's four losses have come by one possession. They've taken care of business, though, when they have substantial leads. They're up 35-13 after the third quarter. Hilltoppers threatening to extend that big advantage when we get back. Western Kentucky leads 35-13 over Charlotte as we begin the fourth quarter from Bowling Green after the fake punt that didn't work out. Western Kentucky with a quick completion from Bailey Zappi to Jared Cerns and it's second down and three to start the fourth quarter from the 27-yard line. Whittington in the backfield with Zappi and Western Kentucky moved. Hilltoppers have uh, not been penalized as often today or as hurtfully as Charlotte has been. That 49ers defense in particular has taken two or three game-changing penalties in this game. And you talk about DPI in the last series. You talk about Charlotte penalties, and then they had a couple that allowed some key conversions. 70 offense, five-yard penalty. Yard penalty. On Cole Spencer, Second the Richard senior left tackle from Louisville. So that'll turn it into second down and eight. Back the ball up to the 32. I think it's important to note that Spencer, 38 consecutive starts in preseason all-conference. Takes a lot of durability if you're going to start 38 straight games on the O-line. Whittington across the 30 and gets the penalty yardage back down around the 27. So call it five yards exactly to erase the penalty instead of third down and three. Dare I say the offensive strategy does not change in this situation? Charlotte shows a five or six man pressure. Waiting to see if they're gonna peel one of the receivers in the doubles on the right out and they did not. Whittington is hammered across the 25 yard line. 
He just got it up for the first down before he was leveled by Tyler Murray. It's a first down and maybe an inch more. Well, he was sandwiched by three different players for Whittington, but able to squeeze it out and get that first down. There's no quit in the Charlotte defense, and I don't know if you can say that about a lot of opponents of this high-powered Western Kentucky offense. Hasn't been a lot of rushing for Western Kentucky today, just 40 rushing yards after Whittington's nine on the last two snaps. First and 10 from the 24-yard line. Zappi to throw, outside for Burt, inside the 15 and down to the 10. Craig Burt Jr. with his third catch of the day sets up first down and goal for Western Kentucky. That's way too much cushion for Burt by Geo Howard on the outside. And now you can really clamp down on that. You see now Howard is going to come at the line of scrimmage with him. Perhaps that was a zone look that I mistook, but... I don't think there's a receiver that wears red this afternoon, Nate, that you can give too much cushion to, and you've got to try and rely on your talents and play them straight up for the most part. Now, again, we get into that shrinking of the field scenario to see if that works in Charlotte's benefit. Zappi fakes forward, throws to the end zone. Ratzlaff can't pull it in. Nearly a fifth Zappi touchdown pass to a fifth different receiver. Weapons, weapons, weapons. We haven't talked a lot about Rats laugh. Save the catch a sequence ago. And that was, actually that was a poorly thrown ball. A little short if you're zappy in that case. And you won't hear those words uh, pass my lips too often. Poorly thrown and ball in the same sentence with Bailey Zappy. Pitch pass to Stearns, has Cofield in front, inside the 10 to the sideline of the five, and a flag is down. This is going to be a hold on Dakota Thompson on the perimeter. Charlotte has wanted a few of those calls today, and they're finally going to get one. You don't see those calls too often between the numbers and the sideline as he tried and free Stearns over there, and Holding. that's exactly what happened. Number 15, offense, 10 yards penalty. The freshman, although second it is down. second year. Western Kentucky still classifies players based on their athletic availability or eligibility. And you can see that he had a fist right there, there on the perimeter of Trey Creamer's jersey. And again, look where that was. I mean, that was at the sideline, and you're still making that play. And kind of speaks about what I was talking about, about both teams' receivers, but in particular Western's blocking downfield. I'm a little too aggressive. And watch this overload to the left. Zappi pumps that way, has time. Stearns in the end zone, almost had it with one hand. Stearns went for the circus catch for what would have been his second touchdown grab of the day, but he's denied good coverage by Doug Newsom. Be very careful, you're Charlotte. You can see the overload to the left side, and oftentimes Zappi is turned and thrown that post route, or excuse me, that call it a pylon route to the right side of that particular spot in the end zone to the weak side. So now it's third down and goal for Western Kentucky from the 16-yard line. Zappi to throw, has time, works through his reads at the line of scrimmage. He throws well past the line of scrimmage, incomplete. Bailey Zappi was at least three, maybe four or five yards past the line of scrimmage and tried to whip one in toward the goal line. And this is going to move Western Kentucky back another few yards and be a loss of down. So in the end, in a goal-to-goal -goal situation, the Hilltoppers are going to end up kicking a field goal from more than 35 yards away. And we'll see Narvison. Fourth down. And goal. Yep. And when you look at this, Zappi just drifting and drifting and drifting. Oh, now watch, he's going to go to his right by his own choice, really, because he didn't have to step up and away from the pressure. It just wasn't there. And you can see the head linesman is watching him all the way down the sideline right there and paying particular attention there. So we're going to see Narvison for a 35 yarder. First field goal attempt for Narvison today. He's 12 of 14 this year. High snap handled by Haggerty, and the 35-yard kick is good. 
2020 third team All-American by PFF. And Braden Narvison cashes in to make it 38-13. Western Kentucky with a dozen and change to go in the fourth. Western Kentucky has made it 38-13 over Charlotte after the 35-yard Braden Narvison field goal. And so we're getting to just about desperation time for the 49ers. Otherwise, these Western Kentucky fans are going to be waving goodbye and send to the Niners on their flight back east. Happy homecoming for Western Kentucky, which will move to six wins in its last eight homecoming games if the Hilltoppers do indeed hold on today. Munson's kickoff is over Bird and nearly out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Closing in uh, on the 94th anniversary next Friday of Western Kentucky's first ever homecoming game. A win today would make the Hilltoppers 56, 31, and three all time. And uh, certainly there will be smiles all around with a third straight win for Western Kentucky. Started to mention it at the end of the third quarter, but four and four is almost misleading with the Hilltoppers Very. having lost by one possession at Army by one possession at home against Indiana. That was only two points. And by six at home to still undefeated UTSA, a ranked opponent now. This is a really, really difficult early part of the schedule. And Western Kentucky is starting to show its quality these last three weeks. First down, Foster hands off to Bird, hesitates through the hole. Good patience to let it develop, and it's an 11-yard gain at a first down. That's a nice play on first down, and again, Charlotte had been pretty solid on first downs. No, I was not here for the first uh, Western Kentucky homecoming. I'm not that old. That was going to be my and next I was question. Gonna, I know, I know, but it's <laughs> Nate's it, into the archives here early, and, and we were warned we might need that for some various purposes here, but uh, we're going to break this game down and continue to do so. It's uh, uh, the Hardy fans are still here. Foster off play action. Pressured by D'Angelo Malone, the ball's out. Western Kentucky lunging after it, but Charlotte falls back on it. Ryan Carrier, the 60-year senior, who his teammates have nicknamed Old Granddad for his seniority, showed his smarts and veteran savvy to get back on the football. And D'Angelo Malone, again, we talked way back in the first half about it, but he's one of the, talked to Tyson Helton going into the season, said, hey, uh, you know, what was it like when D'Angelo came to your office in January? He said, that was a good day. And what D'Angelo, the message he was delivering was, I'm not going to the NFL yet. And he's been, uh, again, anchoring that in position alongside Jawan James. And they're still out on the field in a 38-13 game. Second down and 21 now for Charlotte. Foster under pressure right away, gets it out to Tucker who's going to have to work just to get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about where he gets, but two flags come in. Wonder if this might have been a face mask on Tucker, in which case Charlotte's going to get 15 yards back and an automatic first down. Credit Tucker with just Personal fighting. Foul. Face mask, number one, defense. And it is a face yard mask penalty. on Antoine Kincaid. Automatic, first down. You see Tucker break the... Uh... I don't know how they got it on number one. Tucker's number one. You're right about Kincaid. Demetrius Kane was the one who had the fistful of face mask, and, and you can see his frustration with himself. He knew it. Yeah. But Tucker just fighting along that sideline in a game like this, in less than ideal conditions. You give those guys a lot of credit. Coming in, Tucker averaging 83 yards all purpose per game, and going to be well below that this afternoon. Yeah, he's had a tough time just getting into double digits. So first and 10 for Charlotte at the 40. They gave Western Kentucky, or uh, Charlotte, I should say, an extra five yards on that penalty, I think, by mistake. It was back at the 20 where the face mask happened, and they put the ball at the 40, which is uh, not regulation. There's some pushing and shoving after this play as well. Short gain for Foster. Now, this did give Foster a lot of options that we've seen in the quarterback draw where he could kind of pick A gap, B gap to go through. That was a uh, unusual play call in that situation, particularly running to your opponent's bench where you're not going to get a lot of help over there and the pursuit was there. And again, Western's going to come back with a four-man front. Again, that's anchored by uh, Malone and James on the outside and big zero in the middle. Perfectly timed blitz by Will Ignat. 
but Foster pulled it out of the last moment and runs for a gain of two. He's back in the Western Kentucky bench again, and the officials are hustling to make sure that nothing comes of that. What timing by Will Ignat, and he is very unlucky not to be rewarded. Well, that's how you get the RPO portion of it right there, and the option was to Hunter to take it out. So yet another third down upcoming here for Charlotte. Foster, excuse me. It'll be third down and six for Foster. After a gain of one on a play that seemed like it should have been well into the negative, if not a turnover. Charlotte has dodged a couple of bullets on this possession. Five-man rush. Foster stands in the pocket, delivers late and behind to Bose. A flag did come down in the offensive backfield thrown by the referee, Scott Harden. And he's looking at the Western Kentucky sideline, so it seems like this is going to be against Charlotte. Thought maybe Ballone might have come across Foster's helmet with a hand, but to your point, they're talking to... Holding number 75, offense, 10-yard penalty, still third down. Talking to Helton across the way, and he wants them to move it back. Talk about the job Tyson Helton has done here. and You, know, you cannot repeat again, in my opinion, Nate, uh, the, the close losses and the kind of swings that, that, that they've had. And again, doesn't really look like a three and four team, but they've played like a contender in CUSA tonight. Since Tyson Helton arrived in 2019, the Hilltoppers have played 32 games, not counting this one. 14 of those 32 have been decided by seven points or fewer. It's almost half. Western Kentucky is seven and seven in those games, but hasn't gotten very many breaks this year. Foster against a five-man pressure. He's hit and sacked. That Hilltoppers front got home for seven sacks last week in Miami against FIU. It's Ship and Marcus Bragg who meet at the quarterback. A half sack for both of them, and Charlotte will have to punt. As Ship has been a force in the middle, he's just going to slide with the blocker off the left guard and just go right down. Bragg there, as you mentioned as well. Boy, that ball, it did come out kind of late, and that's probably the correct call, the result of having gone to the turf, but those two have been stout and been anchoring that front four. You put Bragg and Ship in the middle, and you put uh, James and Malone on the outside of that front four, and that's a pretty good foursome. Going from bad to worse for Charlotte, fourth and 21 becomes fourth and 26 after delay a game because the coaching staff was having to communicate with Victor Tucker to get him to stay on the field. It's interesting that the 49ers use both Tucker and DuBose, their two best receivers on punt coverage. Even at the college level, you don't see a ton of that. I mentioned the re receiving the punt is going to be Stearns again, so he's going to be racking up some all-purpose yards here. He's been really solid in the return game. They're actually going to kick away from him, force him to fair catch it. Takes the fair catch at the 40-yard line. And Western Kentucky will have it there when we get back. 8.18 to go. It's all tops on a Saturday in Bowling Green. Some fans sticking around in Bowling Green with their Hilltoppers up 38-13 to in the fourth quarter. And why wouldn't they? Because Bailey Zappi is sticking around and going to take at least one more series behind center. He's thrown for 379 yards and four touchdowns, uh, both of which somehow are below his average for the season per game coming in. Hand off to Noah Whittington. Has a crease across the 45 into Charlotte territory, and he rumbles inside the 40 down to the 38-yard line, a gain of 22 for Noah Whittington. More than half of the rushing yards Western Kentucky had total before that play. Fresh legs in the beleaguered defense is what you're looking at right here, and Whittington just really, look how he runs square with his shoulders. Not looking toward the ground, square up, protecting the football. Good start on first down. First and 10 from the 38. It's Whittington again to the left side. A crease up the middle again. Inside the 20. Back to back. Big carries for Noah Whittington. He rips off 42 yards in just two bites. And the Hilltoppers are in the red zone. Good run blocking. And you're not going to hear that too often. 
someone describing Western Kentucky offensively for the most part. That's good run blocking on that uh, run to the left. And you, you got to think going into this, Nate Charlotte was thinking, okay, Zappi's going to try and pad the stats here and throw the ball all over the yard. And all of a sudden, Winnington pops off two big runs. So first and 10 for the 18, and this Western Kentucky offense is having to be very deliberate now. Down at the Hilltoppers' DNA to take this much time. Whittington again, a short gain this time. He stacked up after a couple of yards to the 16. Hilltoppers will be back home next Saturday, 2.30 Central Time kickoff against Middle Tennessee. Meanwhile, Charlotte will head back for homecoming next Saturday against Rice, trying to avenge... Uh, that big home loss to FAU. They'll have a couple of chips on their shoulders yeah. between the last two weeks, 38 points in each of them, and it still might get worse for this 49ers defense today. Would probably take me about a half hour to research, but I would be very curious to see if Western Kentucky has run the football now four straight times at any point in time this season. Think about probably that not, for a stat. Probably not very often. Maybe that UT Martin game beginning of the season, maybe something like that. I but, was uh, here for that, and I don't believe so. <laughs> so it would be worth looking been, at. Uh, hasn't been a ton of running today, certainly. Western Kentucky has run the ball with some success at times this year when it's been necessary. Last week in particular against FIU. The Tops ran for 148 yards, nearly five per carry. They were committed to the run game. But today it was really zappy through the air, especially in the first half that was working. The uh, uh, clap version of the hard count has also been pulling Charlotte offside almost at will. I think you still have to have a lingering question, and I'll get to it in just a moment. Zappi throws to the flat for Thomas, makes the catch inside the 10, and he spins inside the 5, and it's a touchdown. Thomas got in. Dakota Thomas, the freshman from Snellville, Georgia, who led Western Kentucky in receiving against Charlotte in the regular season finale last year, has his third touchdown of 2021 to make it 44-13 Hilltoppers. They're going to review this one. From here, I did not think there was any chance Thomas got in unless he was riding a defender all the way in. But he's clearly down there short of the goal line. His right shoulder comes yeah, down. I was going to say his shoulder is. His right arm. Yeah, he kind of does a somersault over the defender with the, his feet not touching the ground, his feet ending up in the end zone. Now, I was going to say, it's probably a lingering question among some, maybe in this league and beyond, is. And you think about Zappi and his career at Houston Baptist in the United States southwestern part, not seeing some adverse winter conditions uh, like they're about to see coming up here, you know, in the next couple of weeks as they complete the season. Now, you talk about that running game and the four consecutive runs that we saw here, and I kind of made light of that, that you know, perhaps that's not happened so far this season. Now, I think there might be a concern there to just, uh, you know, understand, you're going to see some – Pretty ugly weather come November, and uh, can that passing game hold up in that? I, I think that's a viable question. Middle Tennessee next week, then back to Zappi's home state of Texas to play Rice on the road. After reviewing the play, it's been determined the runner was down prior to the goal line. Therefore, it'll be first and goal at the one-yard line. for the one, and Western will finish with senior day, the final home game of the year on the 20th of November against Florida Atlantic, and then on the road in Huntington, against Marshall after Thanksgiving. That probably won't be a pretty weather day and two massive games. Those last two, Western Kentucky playing those two teams might well determine Conference USA's East Division. So it's first and goal from the one. Whittington is the tailback. He gets the carry and he's untouched into the end zone. Noah Whittington's first touchdown of the season. And it's 44-13 Western Kentucky. I think that's a nice payoff for the running back. He's been very solid in this drive. And again, the need, I still, I still will argue, Nate, there's a need to develop a running game on this team. Again, for the conditions that I mentioned, might be awaiting them. And I hear Huntington is lovely on Thanksgiving weekend, by the way, <laughs> just so you know. Narvison on for the extra point. Also might be situations where Western Kentucky is under a little bit more pressure to 
run out the clock than they are in this game. You don't do it successfully in this one. You're not too worried about losing this lead. Might not be the case in the, that big rivalry at the end of the year in Huntington. 45-13, all Western Kentucky today. A rainy and cold Saturday night in Bowling Green where Western Kentucky has opened up a big lead over Charlotte. And we want to say a special thank you to our WKU PBS production team in the truck. They're at least staying warm and dry, but they are delivering all the shots that you're seeing tonight. And uh, a big thanks to them for their hard work and helping to bring Hilltoppers football to all of you and Conference USA football on ESPN+. Cedric Bird will bring it out off balance from the end zone. He breaks a tackle around the 10 and stumbles to the 20. Bird just trying to make something happen. At this point, Charlotte just wants to get everybody out of this game healthy. Bird is a little bit slow to get up. Just getting some adjustment on his jersey. He seems to be okay. And so now we're going to probably start seeing a, a fair share of backups getting into the game, although Western Kentucky still has pretty much its number one defense on the field. And you'd expect that Charlotte will stick with Foster at quarterback, probably, considering he's the backup as it is. Yeah, he needs some work. You do not know about Peterson's availability for next week. And I might add in that shot we just had that don't be fooled by the first half highlights you saw where there was actually some sunshine here earlier. Remember, we were kind of commenting on that when we watched it. It's like, yeah, the sun was shining earlier today. Throw over the middle is high and incomplete, intended for Grant DuBose. And that sets up second down and 10. There's a great shot. It has gotten a lot darker since we've been here. And uh, at one point when it was misting really heavily, you almost couldn't even see some of those lights off in the distance. It looked uh, like you could just see the, the trees over the tops of the stadium, and that was almost it, like we were playing in the clouds. Two men were in motion. That's going to be a penalty on Charlotte. DeBose makes the catch and is bottled up right at the line of scrimmage, maybe a gain of a yard. This is going to be a legal motion against the 49ers, and we'll see if Western Kentucky wants to take them back or decline the penalty and have it third down. Tyson Helton is getting the question as we speak, and he is going to decline the penalty. So it'll be third down and nine. Legal shift, two men in motion at the snap. That penalty is declined. I like that decision then by Tyson. Going to force a third and nine. Shavon McEachern is the tailback with Watson, or rather uh, with Foster, I should say. Handoff to McEachern. Tries the right side, has a little seam, hole develops, and he has a first down across the 30. And out to the 33-yard line again of a dozen for Shavon McEachern, the redshirt freshman from Fayetteville, North Carolina. McEachern getting it done on third down. And again, the third down numbers for Charlotte have been pretty consistent tonight towards their season average, as has their fourth down conversions. And recall, they had a couple of those way back in the first half. And to your point, McEachern is someone we haven't seen a lot of this afternoon and evening. And he's getting some work here. So first and 10 for the Niners. McEachern again, pursued in the backfield and then spun down after a short gain to the 37. Call it a pickup of four. And a good play eventually made by Nico Cooper, the defensive end. So both of these teams have Rice on their schedule to finish out. And Louisiana Tech, I believe, would be the common two, correct? No Louisiana Tech for Western. Okay. Get my geography right. I know that, I know that <laughs> it's Charlotte. I better look at that. I know that Charlotte has to uh, go to Ruston. Foster keeps it on the read option. Has one blocker, but he needed two, and he lost the ball. It's loose on the sideline. Foster stays down. The officials are saying he was down, and now there is real concern for James Foster, who went down awkwardly in the arms of Jacques Evans, freshman D tackle from Dublin, Georgia. And any time you see the ball come flying out like that, while well, the player's going down painfully, you worry about the possibility of injury. And the ruling is that it was a fumble, but the ball went out of bounds before Western Kentucky recovered it, in which case it backs up to the spot of the fumble so Charlotte will have it 
right around the 36-yard line. But the concern right now is, of course, for James Foster. And everybody hopes that he is okay. 49ers otherwise going to be reaching very deep down their quarterback depth chart. Step aside again, 3.16 to go in this ball game. Western Kentucky leads by 32. James Foster was able to walk off the field under his own power, but he is out of the game, replaced by Dylan Ratliff, the third-string quarterback who moved up as the backup today with no Chris Reynolds available. So Ratliff is in to his second career game. Redshirt Jr. from Harrisburg, North Carolina, hands off to Shavon McEachern, and Ratliff has become the lead blocker, throws a good one for McEachern, who has a first down to the 46. Well, he just had to cringe, if you're Will Healy, and see Ratliff out there trying to throw a block. And, you recall we talked to the SID staff of Charlotte before the game. We were like, you know, who's your emergency? And they said, well, let's hope we don't get to that point. And recall Foster, you know, had that hand issue near the end of the first half and kind of forgot about that. He's played relatively well here in the second. And then all of a sudden he lands awkwardly on the far side of the field. And now you have Ratliff in and they're able to convert. So he's going to get a new set of downs. Victor Tucker limped off after that play as well, the second team all-conference receiver. He's on the Charlotte sideline. McEachern was first contacted in the backfield and gets back to the line of scrimmage before he's brought down by a group of Hilltoppers, among them the North Carolina transfer Matthew Flint out of Huntsville, Alabama. It'll be second down and 10 for Charlotte. There's a lot of jawing going on, particularly with Ashton Gist, the right guard, and the secondary of Western Kentucky, so should come as no surprise at this point in the game. There's a lot of that going on and just hasn't been the best of afternoon and evenings for Charlotte, but they've hung in there, Nate. You know, they don't quit. I think it's a representation of their coach and their university, and Western Kentucky has so much to play for here down the stretch. McEachern churns his legs close to midfield. They'll give it to him on a gain of four. Sets up third down and six inside the final 90 seconds. And uh, Will Healy then took Grant DuBose out of the game as well, probably just after seeing Tucker and Foster go down, thinking he doesn't need another injury to his key wide receiver. McEachern up the middle on third down. He's close to a first down. Give him the 46. It'll be fourth and two. And Grant DuBose is a phenomenal story as well. The player who was at Division II Miles College had his season canceled due to the pandemic last year. He was working part-time at Walmart, but earned a tryout with Charlotte thanks to the recommendation of James Foster to his head coach. 2019 at Division II, DuBose went for eight catches, 104 yards, and a touchdown all season. Ratliff's in trouble, and he's going to be stopped. Turnover on downs. In his Division I debut, that big opening win against Duke, he went for 118 yards and two scores, more than he had all the prior year at Division II. Bailey Zappi has talked about any kind of nerves about moving from FCS to FBS. How about D2 up to FBS? And DuBose probably rid himself of those right away. And there's a big difference here under the bright lights. And one of the things we talked about with Will Healy was uh, they will continue to have Duke on the schedule. Back to your point about DuBose in that opening game of this season, North Carolina will be on their schedule as well. And so uh, that's fertile recruiting kind of wars there as well. You're playing those ACC powers. That schedule is just going to get tougher and tougher for Charlotte too. One of those six Conference USA schools moving up to the American Athletic Conference in a couple of years' time, as announced this week during the reshuffling of a lot of schools in CUSA. 
Drew Zabi, the backup quarterback, is in for Western Kentucky. First snap not taken by Bailey Zappi. There will only be one more, and perhaps we won't even do that. The clock is about even, play and game, and so that will be all. Western Kentucky wins on homecoming for the sixth time in eight years. A third straight victory for the Tops to move back to 500 at four and four. And certainly, Bob, they will feel like absolutely everything is in front of them. Big rivalry at home next week against Middle Tennessee. That Rice and those two huge games, the two other teams likely to be tied with them for first place in the East, FAU and Marshall to finish out the year. As they affectionately call in this part of the world 100 miles of hate, the big game between Middle Tennessee and Western Kentucky. And again, to your point, and we've talked about it throughout the broadcast, Western Kentucky has a lot to play for. A lot of good things should be ahead of them. And the same for Charlotte. They've just been bitten by the injury bug and ran into a very potent offense this afternoon. So for Bob Belvin and the rest of our WKU PBS crew here on ESPN Plus, Nate Catter saying so long from Bowling Green. Bailey Zappi, five total touchdowns.